Zhou Yinqing died of a terminal illness, but once she traveled, she met Cheng Ruashi, who was also a traveler. Cheng Ruashi traveled back in his early years and was skilled in cooking. Together with his husband Zhou Wen, he developed the Zhou family into the number one in the business world of the Luo dynasty. And Zhou Yinqing had a good fate, and surprisingly dressed as the second miss of the Zhou family. Zhou Yinqing, who thought she could lie down happily with the signing this time, did not expect that the Zhou family would start to venture into the infrastructure of the Luo dynasty this happens to be Zhou Yinqing's old profession from then on, she completely embarked on the path of completing the garden repair and running the school after completing the repair the endless path to career development. At the same time as Zhou Yinqing was driven to the throne, his powerful fiancée A.E. of Prince Jing of Jingfen was not a fuel.Efficient lamp, Zhou Yinqing takes care of the daily life of Party A's father, if we design a garden for them, we can naturally stay there for a long time before we have a chance to find the clues we want. This is a good idea, but how do you persuade Prince Jing to design a garden for them? It's my job to handle the homeowner's father. Daily life of Cheng Ruashi's beloved daughter, Yuner, what are you thinking? I was thinking, Mom, are you a chef who can make fish-flavored shredded pork? There's no fish-flavored shredded pork from anywhere with kimchi. Zhou Yuncheng looked eagerly at Cheng Ruashi. All right, all right, come to Xinghua village in half a month. Mother and daughter love wealth and have a proper way to obtain it, by the way, if you want me to do something, you can't do it without paying. Of course there is, as merchants, we do not engage in loss-making transactions. Brain exercise is the most valuable. You can talk about it, but if you can't talk about it, I'll go instead. Keywords of the novel Time travel to become a mother and daughter, infrastructure cuisine remains the same without pop-ups, time travel to become a mother and daughter, infrastructure cuisine remains the same without pop-ups. Download the full text, time travel to become a mother and daughter, Infrastructure cuisine remains the same without missing the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Did you travel here? What a coincidence, me too. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Did you travel here? What a coincidence, me too Zhou Yuncheng lay on the hospital bed, her eyes twirling weakly as she looked wearily at the snow.white walls around her. The nervous doctors and nurses, their eyes finally fixed on the bright surgical lamp. The noisy sounds in my ears continued, including the sounds of various instruments, doctor's orders, and nurses' replies. But all of this seems to have nothing to do with her. Zhou Yinqing's thoughts drifted back a long time ago, when she didn't have to worry about catching a cold and worsening her condition, so she could go for a breeze without restraint. Zhou Yinqing really likes the feeling of the wind blowing over her cheeks, as if it can take away all her troubles. Her thoughts drifted further and further away, and her consciousness became increasingly blurred, feeling like she was about to fall asleep. But Zhou Yinqing understood in her heart that her life should come to an end. Anyway, since falling ill, I have been greatly tormented both mentally and physically, which can be considered a relief. Zhou Yinqing thought to herself and closed her eyes with relief. After a long period of darkness, what's so loud, Swona? Zhou Yinqing's eyelids still felt a bit heavy, and she had to put in a lot of effort to open them. It's a dark place with nothing left, and this is no longer a familiar hospital ward. Why is it so shaking? Where am I? Zhou Yinqing thought as she felt a tightness in her chest and couldn't catch her breath. In addition, the board under her body kept bouncing up and down, which felt like sitting in a sedan chair, making Zhou Yunqing very nauseous. As her consciousness gradually returned, she gradually understood her situation. She was confined in a small space. This space can hardly accommodate her lying alone, with walls on all sides. She couldn't even turn over except for being able to barely lift her hands and feet. She gradually became aware of the noisy sounds outside, in addition to the swona, there were also small gong sounds mixed with crying and howling. Zhou Yunqing's breathing became increasingly rapid. I can't sit idly by like this, Zhou Yunqing thought while desperately knocking on the wall above. 
Outside, the gray sky was terrifyingly low, and a group of people dressed in plain clothes slowly advanced on the lust ground. This is the funeral procession for Miss Zhou from the Zhou family. This team is not many, almost all of them are from the Zhou government. To be precise, it is all the people trusted and close by Zhou Wen, the master of the Zhou family, and Cheng Ruashi, the wife of the Zhou family. Even those who argue are the most reliable and strict mouthed, and there are only eight people who are the most basic for funerals. The Zhou family is a large family in the capital city of Luojing, but the ceremonial guard for Miss Eyre's funeral is so rudimentary, all because. Miss Zhou from the Zhou family died mysteriously. She was only 15 years old, at the same age as a flower, but died from poisoning. The Zhou family was unable to find the person who poisoned it, and for some reason, they did not want this matter to be widely publicized. So I planned to secretly bury someone without telling anyone else. It was only said that the second young lady was ill and went back to her hometown to recuperate. The sound of gongs and drums, firecrackers ringing in unison, and Zhou Yunqing's tapping was not heard in this crying and howling situation. Fortunately, the team quickly arrived at the burial site. According to the customs of the Luo dynasty, before being buried, the parents of Miss Eyre need to support the coffin before being buried. The band and the mourners all stopped, and the world finally quieted down. Yunqing. Zhou Wen choked up and said, Although you are stubborn, you are still my own flesh and blood. Your little lady left early. Before we could finish speaking, we could only hear rhythmic dong, dong, dong sounds coming from inside the coffin. Upon hearing this voice, Zhou Wen immediately stopped speaking. At this moment, only Zhou Wen and Cheng Ruashi were standing in front of the coffin. Ruashi, can you hear me? Mr. Zhou hesitated. Cheng Ruashi didn't have much sadness on her face from beginning to end. She didn't speak, just stared at the coffin. Dong, dong, dong. Zhou Yunqing heard the sound outside noticeably decrease before. The air in the coffin was too little, and she was already as angry as a threat. But her survival instinct made her use her last bit of strength to knock on the lid of the coffin. There is really a sound, Cheng Ruashi turned to look at Mr. Zhou in surprise. Someone. As soon as Zhou Wen finished speaking, Li, the housekeeper of the Zhou family, had already walked up quickly. Open it. Zhou Wen said. Li, the butler, was very surprised, but was scared back by Zhou Wen's gaze and didn't dare to ask more questions. Just greeting the two people who just carried the coffin and asking them to come and open it. This. This is unlucky. The person carrying the coffin was clearly in a dilemma. Take these, Butler Lee gave some silver to the person carrying the coffin. Brother, we were supposed to do this, what's there to be afraid of, said one person to another hesitant colleague. The two of them made up their minds to accept the silver handed over by Butler Lee and opened the coffin in three or five strokes. Afterwards, he took a few steps back with some fear. The sudden opening of the lid brought in fresh air, and Zhou Yinqing felt like she had come back to life. The smell of dirt in the air made her gradually wake up, and she finally realized that she was in the coffin. Why don't we even have to cremate now and bury them directly? Zhou Yinqing sat up while holding the coffin while roast in his heart. The scene before her was so shocking that her chin dropped. I saw a group of people dressed in ancient costumes standing in front of me. They were all dressed in plain clothes, with white cloth straps tied around their heads, looking at themselves with a frightened expression. The air froze, and the members of the band were so scared that they forgot the classic action of dropping their instruments to the ground. Mr. Zhou, on the other hand, was so scared that he took several steps back and sat down on the ground with a butt butt butt. Are you filming a costume drama? Zhou Yincheng couldn't help but ask the nearest Cheng Ruashi this question. Cheng Ruashi instantly understood what was happening, it was the kind of radar that received the correct instructions, clear and clear. However, she didn't have time to explain more to Zhou Yincheng, but pretended to say loudly to Zhou Wen. Master. Yincheng has woken up. 
I think the doctors must have misdiagnosed him. Then he changed to a low voice and continued, Zhou Wen, if Yun Cheng is considered a fraud, do you know what the consequences will be? Of course Zhou Wen knows. In the year when he first met Cheng Ruashi, the two of them met the fate of a person who was believed to be a zombie. Being treated as a practitioner of witchcraft, being burned alive, and their family being driven out of the village. I see. Madam is absolutely right. Zhou Wenxin led the conversation and immediately said, it must have been a misdiagnosis by the doctors. Now let's take Yinqing back and ask the doctors to take a look again. After Zhou Wen finished speaking, everyone began to come to their senses from shock and discuss something in a low voice. At this moment, Zhou Wen called for Butler Li and whispered. Lao Li, except for those from the Zhou family, please take care of them. Don't let anyone else know about this matter. Yes, sir, Butler Li nodded and immediately summoned the servants and maids to gather the few band members and eight coffin bearers together, walking towards the distance. During this period, Cheng Ruashi had already lifted Zhou Yuncheng and whispered to her. You have traveled through time. Zhou Yuncheng had an earthquake in his pupils and was about to say something when he was interrupted by Cheng Ruashi. If you want to survive, don't talk. Although Zhou Yuncheng dare not speak, her inner activities are still extremely rich. Have I traveled through time? Why don't I have the memory of the original owner? And if I heard you right, they just said Yuncheng. Isn't that me? I traveled. Became me. And I have also read a lot of time travel novels. Isn't it popular to have a system now? What about the system? Considering that Zhou Yunqing was too weak and her thoughts were chaotic, she quickly fell asleep on the sedan chair she was returning to. When she woke up again, she slept in an antique room. The whole room was dimly lit, and the yellow pear wood bed frame was eerie. In front of the bed, there was also a screen with a picture of a beautiful woman. From Zhou Yunqing's perspective, the beauty on the screen half squinted her eyes and wore a chilling smile. Am I traveling to another place? Zhou Yunqing recalled her previous experience of being locked in a coffin. If it were a dream, it would be too real, plus the ancient lady who said I had traveled that lady. Zhou Yunqing was thinking this way. A woman who looked almost in her thirties, with a grand bun and a very elegant appearance, exuding a not sharp but not approachable temperament. Her eyes were full of distance and vigilance, and she pushed open the door and walked into the room. Isn't this the lady I've traveled through? Zhou Yunqing was surprised and convinced that she had not been dreaming before. Cheng Ruashi walked in and carefully closed the door. What is your name? Cheng Ruashi asked Zhou Yunqing's first question. Zhou Yunqing. After Zhou Yunqing answered, she added, Is this a prank show for you? Of course not, Cheng Ruashi's tone was a bit cold, mixed with a hint of impatience. I can only tell you two things now. First, your current identity is Miss Zhou Yunqing from the Zhou family. Second, you have amnesia after being poisoned, not from evil. Don't say that you are not from here, otherwise you will be burned to death and our family will also get into trouble. Are you also from time travel? Zhou Yunqing asked. Yes, but I have traveled back many years, Cheng Ruashi replied. As Zhou Yunqing was about to ask something, a voice came from outside the door. Everyone, this way, I wonder if Miss Air has woken up. Cheng Ruashi waved his hand to interrupt Zhou Yunqing's confusion and said. You pretend to have amnesia, I'll protect you for now. After this matter is over, we'll discuss it in detail. As soon as the words fell, the doctors followed Zhou Wen in. The doctors looked at Zhou Yunqing's face and each gave her a pulse number, asking if she felt any discomfort. Afterwards, Zhou Wen and Cheng Ruashi left Zhou Yunqing's chamber with their doctors and went to the hall to chat about their illness. Miss has lost her memory. The doctors shook their heads when they heard that Miss had faked her corpse. This is not very wonderful, said Lang Zhongjiao. Yes, can it be? Lang Zhongyi continued. Miss, it's the poison of the anti-meteor pill. In theory, 
There should be no antidote, said Lang Zhongbing. What do you mean? the master asked. Miss, you may have fallen for evil. Lang Zhongjia seemed to have made a great decision before daring to say this. Please pay attention to your vocabulary. Cheng Ruashi's voice suddenly rose up. Do you know how to deal with things that are identified as evil in our court? The three doctors looked at each other and hesitated. Yes, everyone, I have always been quite taboo about such things. If I'm not very confident, I hope you don't say such things, Zhou Wen said at this moment. I see that Mrs. Face is rosy and her eyes are full of vitality, not like she has possessed an evil object. At this moment, Dr. Zhou saw Zhou Yunqing's expression towards him and said, Previously, it was found that the poison Miss was poisoned with is the elixir of death, so it was determined that she was powerless to turn the tide. However, although the elixir of death is difficult to detoxify, the requirements for its dosage are extremely strict. Perhaps, Dar. Zhou is absolutely right. Perhaps it was because the dosage of this elixir was insufficient, which only caused the young lady to feign death for a period of time, Lang Zhongyi continued. That's right, Lang Zhongjia seemed to have grabbed a life.saving straw. Mrs. Amnesia is also largely caused by the elixir of death. Now, it seems that the doctors have found a way for Zhou Yuncheng not to be burned to death, and have also set the stage for their previous, suspected misdiagnosis. Everything, aside from dosage and toxicity, is just plain hooliganism. No one knows how much poison Zhou Yuncheng has ingested, so it is impossible to accurately determine whether the toxicity is lethal. Fortunately, Yun Cheng was suddenly poisoned, and we had already discussed with everyone before. Cheng Ruashi said. Yes, yes, Zhou Wen said as he looked at several doctors, taking over the conversation. Since we have found the reason and Yun Cheng is fine, let's talk to the public. Let's talk about Mrs. Sudden Illness. Fortunately, Jiren has her own destiny. After last night's night, her condition has stabilized, Lang Zhongjia continued. The old man nodded and looked at several doctors, then said, it's not convenient to publicize the issue of amnesia. Understood, understood, several doctors said repeatedly, Master Zhou, please rest assured that we will never reveal a word to the public. On Zhou Yunqing's side, after all this turmoil, he was extremely tired. Although she was full of questions and struggled to wait for Cheng Ruashi to understand what the situation was, she couldn't resist falling asleep. However, neither she nor Cheng Ruashi expected that before they could have a detailed conversation, something would happen to the Zhou mansion. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Mr. Zhou was captured You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Mr. Zhou was captured on the second day, it was unclear whether it was because of yesterday's turmoil or because her body had been poisoned. Zhou Yunqing felt very tired and slept without a dream until dawn. Opening my eyes again, I felt a bit dazed and didn't know where I was for a moment. Is the young lady awake? A soft female voice came. This is the dim sum that the madam made for you this morning. Do you want to get up and taste it now? Madam. Zhou Yunqing recalled all the things from yesterday. Oh, I have traveled through time and also met another lady who has traveled through time. While thinking, he stood up and replied, Is Madam at home? Yes, she said she'll come and see you later, the little girl replied. Zhou Yunqing looked at the talking girl and asked, What's your name? My name is Xing'er, I just arrived at Mrs. Room, Xing'er brushed her body and said. Just arrived. Zhou Yunqing asked, Where did the previous maid go? Xing'er doesn't know, Xing'er replied with her head lowered, I only heard the butler say that the service in the Miss Courtyard was not good before, which caused the Miss to suffer such a big crime. What the master and madam mean is that everyone inside and outside should be replaced. All replaced. Zhou Yunqing was psychologically suspicious. Isn't it not possible to ask how the protagonist was poisoned? Before she could figure it out, Zhou Yunqing had already seen the cream cake on the table. This. Zhou Yunqing thought psychologically, 
have I reached some kind of chaotic era? Can things like cream cakes appear? This was done by Madame herself, Shinger said. Although Madame used to be a very famous cook, she hasn't personally cooked for a long time. She said that Miss has suffered a big crime this time and must eat something good. Zhou Yuncheng carefully looked at it and found that it was actually the simplest qi foam cake. After dividing it into three pieces, she added cream and fruit as a layer, and then spread light green cream on top, decorating it with some fruits. Well, there is actually a gingerbread person, Madam has a good taste. Zhou Yunqing thought to herself as she picked up a spoon and scooped up a large one to give to her mouth. Delicious. Zhou Yunqing blurted out, the milk aroma is so strong, it's not greasy, it must be animal cream. What is animal cream? Xing'er asked beside her in confusion. That's it, Zhou Yunqing pointed to the cream on the cake. It also has a taste of matcha, so it should be with matcha powder added. I see. Xing'e responded with this kind of agreement, but her face still clearly seemed to understand and not give. Zhou Yunqing was already a foodie, and due to her previous illness, she hadn't eaten anything recklessly for a long time, so she ate this cake exceptionally well. While eating, she also invited Xing'e to help her make a pot of tea. Eat slowly, don't choke, Xing'e said with a smile as she poured tea for Zhou Yunqing. Zhou Yunqing quickly finished eating all the cake, drank two cups of tea, and finally felt some blood return. When will Madam come over? Zhou Yunqing couldn't wait to hear her explain what was going on. Just now, Xia Lihua went over and reported that you were awake. I reckon you will come over soon, Xing'er said. As soon as the words fell, a little girl who looked only eleven or twelve years old hurriedly ran in. Miss, miss, it's not good. Before he could finish speaking, he tripped over the threshold and fell to the ground with a thud. Little pear flower. Xing'er shouted and quickly went up to help the little girl. Why are you so anxious? You can speak slowly. I just went over to report to madam that you are awake, little Lihua said with a tearful tone, swallowing her saliva. I saw it, I saw it. Before she could finish her sentence, the little girl burst into tears. What did you see? Xing'er asked anxiously. Seeing someone from the government coming, take the old master away. Little Lihua cried with a small face, as if mustering up great courage to say this. Take it away. Zhou Yunqing's face darkened. Although she had just walked through and had no feelings for this family, since everyone called her miss, would this old man also be implicated if he collapsed so quickly? Moreover, Madame helped herself yesterday, and it was not something Zhou Yunqing wanted to see their couple suffer. Why was it taken away? Did you say that? Zhou Yunqing thought for a moment and asked. No, I'm not quite sure. Xia Lihua stabilized her emotions and said, I only heard intermittent rumors about the poor quality of the materials. Is the quality of the material not good? Zhou Yunqing thought to herself, these endless words don't have much effect. It seems like she needs to go find Madame and ask. However, the quality of the materials is not good, and I am not willing to hear this for a lifetime. Where's Madame? Zhou Yunqing continued to ask. No, I don't know, Xia Lihua said. I saw the master being taken away, so I quickly ran back to inform the young lady. This girl is too young to be fooled in her work. Zhou Yunqing thought to herself and said to Xing'er, Take me to Madam's place first, let's go and have a look. Okay, miss, Xing'er said, but you haven't combed or changed your clothes yet. Xia Lihua, Zhou Yunqing said, Go to Madam's courtyard first. If she is still there, say I will go immediately. If she is not in the courtyard, ask where I can find her. Okay, miss. Xia Lihua quickly turned around and prepared to run out. Little Pear Blossom. Zhou Yunqing shouted, and Little Pear Blossom trembled and stopped. You need to stabilize first, don't panic, what's up to me? Zhou Yunqing said. Xia Lihua's face trembled as she didn't expect Zhou Yunqing to say that. 
Then, as if she had calmed down, she nodded solemnly and turned around to leave quickly. Miss, it seems that you are different from what was rumored, Xing Er said suddenly as she looked at Xia Lihua's departure. What do rumors say about me? Zhou Yunqing asked. Rumors have it that you have a rebellious and violent temper, Xing Er said. But in my opinion, you are completely different. And your way of speaking is very special. Xing Er may have said it vaguely, but in fact, Zhou Yunqing, who was previously known, not only had a mischievous and violent temper, but also had a notorious love for vanity in bullying others. Although the Zhou family was a merchant, due to their great power, Zhou Yunqing often relied on their strong financial resources to bully others. I'll just wash and change clothes first, Zhou Yunqing paused in her heart. The little girl was quite sensitive and quickly changed her tone. What I mean is, you should serve me quickly to wash and change clothes. The top priority is to first understand what's wrong with the master, and now we can only hear the specific situation from Mrs. Zhou. Xing Er led Zhou Yunqing to sit in front of the stage, then asked someone to fetch water to rinse her mouth and face, and then asked Zhou Yunqing to comb her hair in front of the bronze mirror. This is the first time Zhou Yunqing has seen her face. In the bronze mirror, I look like I am 15 or 16 years old, with fair and translucent skin, which is the collagen face that this age should have. The slender eyebrows and round eyes are in line with Zhou Yunqing's own aesthetic of a small upturned nose. The lips are not thin or thick, and it still appears very delicate on the entire small round face. Not bad, Zhou Yunqing thought to herself. Although I used to be pretty, after all, when I was that old, I couldn't compare to the current water spirit. Xinger's dexterity quickly arranged a simple and beautiful hairstyle for Zhou Yunqing. After changing clothes, Zhou Yunqing didn't delay any longer and took Xinger to Madame's place. As soon as I stepped into Madame's courtyard door, I heard a panicked male voice coming. Madame Ming Cha. We really don't have enough personal gain to buy substandard wood. Looking for the sound, Zhou Yunqing looked inside and saw his wife sitting high on a chair in the main hall, holding a thick notebook in her hand, while three men knelt down in the hall. If you say so, why would the people of the Gang Mansion say that there are problems with the materials we provided to the Wang Mansion for building the attic? Madam's voice was very calm, without any panic. If it weren't for Zhou Yunqing knowing that the master had just been taken away, she would definitely have thought this was an ordinary question. We don't know either, the other man replied. At this point, Zhou Yunqing had already brought Xing Er to the front of the hall. You're here. Madam saw Zhou Yunqing and said calmly, there's something at home that I don't have time to talk to you in detail. You should go back to your room to take care of it first. I'll handle the things here before I go find you. I heard, Zhou Yunqing said, I came here to see if there is anything I can help with. After speaking, Zhou Yunqing walked up to his wife and reached out to take the thick notebook from her hand. As expected, this was the procurement list of materials. Are you an accountant? Madam handed the notebook to Zhou Yunqing and asked in a low voice. I guess so, Zhou Yunqing frowned and quickly flipped through the notebook in her hand, asking, who did this account? It's me, said the slightly better dressed man among the three. This is Mr. Zhang from the accounting room, the lady introduced. The other two are Xiao Li and Xiao He, who are responsible for purchasing. Lao Zhang, this is just a material entry in exit list record, without a stamped purchase order and quality inspection report. Zhou Yunqing looked up at Lao Zhang. Inventory records. Purchase orders. What else? What report? Old Zhang looked confused. What I mean is that your ledger only records the input and output of wood, and there should also be a certificate for confirming the quality of materials with the merchant when you purchase wood, right? Zhou Yunqing tried to explain it in language they could understand, and she really didn't know what professional terminology should be in this world. Some, some. Lao Zhang understood now. Some of them are in the accounting room, and some are still with the merchants. Where is the person who caused this incident in the attic? Zhou Yunqing asked. 
Oh, yes, it should be. It should be in the accounting room. Old John was too nervous when he heard that the master had been taken away. Then hurry up and clean it up for me to see, Zhou Yinching said. It's too late, Mrs. interrupted, we're not quite sure what's going on over there with the master. It's not realistic to take the time to check the accounts. Old John, please give me all the relevant information, Zhou Yinching turned to look at his wife. We'll walk towards the master's side and look at the materials as we go. Lao Zhang listened to Zhou Yinching's words and looked at Madam. Madam thought for a moment and nodded at Lao Zhang. After Lao Zhang left, his wife asked Zhou Yinching. Can you see the problem in such a short period of time? I can't say it. Zhou Yinching looked at the gloomy sky and said, let's take a look first. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 When Wood is Broken from the Middle you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 When Wood is Broken from the Middle on the Carriage Zhou Yunchen was very uncomfortable riding a carriage for the first time in his two lifetimes. No matter how busy she was before, she insisted on not working on transportation, including but not limited to cars, trains, airplanes, and ships. Mainly because she is very prone to motion sickness, air sickness, and seasickness. Whenever she reads books, reads on her phone, or reads on her computer, she will inevitably vomit. Unexpectedly, while traveling, I had to bear the pressure to read the books on the carriage. Zhou Yunchen became increasingly depressed as she thought about it. When the carriage arrived at the entrance of Prince Jing's mansion, Zhou Yunchen's face was already pale and his stomach was in turmoil. Are you okay? Madam looked at Zhou Yunchen's extremely poor condition and said, are you still poisoned? It's okay, I get motion sickness, Zhou Yunchen waved her hand and replied. Have you finished reading it? How's it going? Madam continued. Before Zhou Yunchen could answer, someone had already walked out to the carriage. Who are you? How can you park at the entrance of Prince Jing's mansion at will? A servant who was pinching his throat shouted loudly. We are the Zhou family from Daoku. Lao Zhang's voice rang out politely. We are visiting for the matter of wood in your attic. Could you please inform us? It's you guys, wait a moment, the servant said before entering the door. In no time, a butler-like person came out and welcomed them in. Madam Zhou, Miss Zhou, this way, please. The butler was unexpectedly polite to Zhou Yuncheng. In her impression, the portrayal of the Wang mansion in TV dramas towards merchants was almost always domineering and commanding. Please wait here, Miss Zhou. Our prince and queen will come soon. The butler led them to an obviously unfinished garden and left. Zhou Yunchen looked around and saw some gardeners decorating the garden, some transplanting trees, and some digging the soil to prepare for planting flowers and grass. This garden is quite monotonous with small bridges and flowing water, and pavilions and rockeries without anything, Zhou Yunching said. You can't compare like that, Mrs. Zhou replied. It's already quite good here. The materials you provided them should be for repairing that attic, right? Zhou Yunching looked at the several columns in the middle of the yard. Well, let's go take a look. Mrs. Zhou said and lifted her leg as she walked over. Zhou Yuncheng followed Mrs. Zhou and quickly arrived at the location of several pillars. There is not a single laborer here, except for a few red columns that have already been erected. There are also neatly stacked some wood next to them, but there is one scattered outside. Zhou Yuncheng looked up carefully and saw that two or three wooden beams had already been built. There was a spot in the middle where the beam was not yet built, but instead, there were scattered wood shavings right below. At this moment, a group of people came from afar in a mighty manner. Zhou Yunching saw from a distance the men and women walking in the front, dressed in luxurious brocade. They must be the prince and the queen. Most of the people who followed behind them were maids, and there were also a few servants. Undoubtedly, it is the royal mansion, even the maids and servants, and the clothing looks much more textured than the servants of the Zhou family. Zhou Yunching thought this way, but her eyes fell on a young servant who was walking at the back, 
looking like he was in his twenties and wearing a short fight. This person was too out of place. I have seen Prince Jing, Princess Jing. As soon as someone approached, Mrs. Zhou took the lead in brushing her body and bowing. Zhou Yuncheng and others also bowed along. Prince Jing nodded slightly and said, Madam Zhou, your master's business is so big, and you are a guest of honor for the Empress Dowager. We were very confident in purchasing the materials for the renovation of the new garden, but we never intended to cause such a thing. After listening, Mrs. Zhou frowned and carefully considered before speaking, Prince, if there is any problem with the materials we supply, we should take full responsibility. However, Mrs. Zhou deliberately paused and lowered her head slightly, looking straight at Prince Jing. There is no consensus on this matter yet, but your government has already asked the government to take my master away. Is it also inappropriate? Prince Jing has always been aware of the temper of this Zhou family lady. She had already had contact with her master at the time of the Holy Emperor Qianlong. After the Holy Emperor ascended the throne, he had intended to appoint the Zhou family member as an official. However, he had no intention of entering the officialdom at all. On the contrary, this lady of the Zhou family, with her good skills, not only firmly grasped the Empress Dowager's heart, but also helped her husband open many restaurants and create a rich foundation. Then these two couples, relying on their relationship with the royal family, began to develop their business into supplying materials for the construction of the imperial city. Many imperial relatives, aristocrats, and high dot ranking officials have also entrusted them with the materials for repairing their own gardens upon seeing this. On the one hand, it is reassuring, and on the other hand, it is also a way to show goodwill to the Empress Dowager and the Emperor. Madame Zhou, it's not the government office we notified. Princess Jing took two steps forward and gently pulled Madame Zhou over, speaking in a volume that was not too big or too small and could be heard by anyone next to the pavilion. It's really caused a loss of life. The dead laborer happened to be the nephew of the foreman. The foreman is used to being horizontal and hasn't reported the news to us yet. He has already gone to report to the authorities, saying that the poor quality of the wood caused it to break while installing the beam and killed his nephew. Madame Zhou, you don't have to worry too much. I just sent someone to ask. Your master is fine for now, as long as you provide evidence to prove that this matter is not related to the materials you provided. Otherwise, before Prince Jing could finish speaking, someone suddenly interrupted him. Pretty sister. Why is your complexion so bad? Are you okay? It was the little servant who Zhou Yunqing saw wearing a short skirt and was out of place next to him earlier. I saw him approach Zhou Yunqing with a pale face and ask loudly. Zhou Yunqing was indeed motion sick and had not yet recovered. She was startled by his sudden appearance in front of her and instinctively stepped back. Thinking to himself, is this servant not going to die anymore? He spoke so loudly when the master was speaking up. Unexpectedly, a maid standing on the outskirts immediately stepped forward and said, Crown Prince, why did you steal the clothes of a laborer again? No wonder my mother was looking for you everywhere just now. Crown Prince. Zhou Yunqing asked in confusion, but Mrs. Zhou interrupted her in time. Yuner, I've almost met Prince Jing. She even pinched Zhou Yunqing's palm as she spoke. That's right, this person is the only crown prince in the Prince Jing's mansion, Luo Tian. Zhou Yunqing immediately understood and crouched down slightly, saying, Hello crown prince. Looking up, I saw everyone's puzzled eyes. Miss Zhou, this is a great gift, said Princess Jing. It's really special. Zhou Yunqing's heart pounded. How did they salute just now? Oh by the way, bow. TSK. Pretty sister, why did you keep staring at that piece of wood just now? Luo Tian said as he was thinking about how to round it back, oh, that's right. Zhou Yunqing quickly took the conversation and said, Prince, Princess, I know what's going on. This time, it's not really a problem with the wood we supply. What credentials do you have? Prince Jing asked. 
Look here, Zhou Yuncheng walked up to the pile of wood and pointed to the scattered wood outside, saying, if I'm not mistaken, this is exactly the wooden beam that went wrong, right? Xiao Zhuo, you come and answer, the butler said to a servant. Exactly. Xiao Zhuo lowered his head and took a step forward. It was this wooden beam. At that time, the leader, O.R. Foreman Lao Zhou, was asking his nephew Xiao Zhou to stand on the beam and knock the leader in, but suddenly the beam broke. Then, Xiao Zhou fell off it and the person was gone. You're talking about this tenon, right? Zhou Yinchen pointed to the fracture of the beam head and said. Yes, Xiao Zhuo replied. Prince, princess, look at this. Zhou Yinchen stood up and said, this is called a tenon, and there is a mortise and tenon on it. By fitting the tenon with that mortise and tenon, the installation of this beam can be completed. However, the position of this tenon is broken. This is not a clear indication, said Princess Jing. Is there a problem with the quality of the wood? No, Princess. Zhou Yunqing continued, if there is a quality issue with the wood, if a person stands on a suspended wooden beam, the beam will break in the middle. Why? Luo Tian spoke at this moment. Prince Jing's face showed a slight displeasure and he said, I don't even know this. It's okay, Crown Prince, look at it. Zhou Yinqing lowered her head and casually found a relatively thin piece of wood, hung it in the air on two stones, and then stood up. With a snap, the wood unexpectedly broke. Zhou Yinqing stumbled slightly, and Luo Tian quickly helped her. Be careful, beautiful sister. Luo Tian smiled innocently, then let go of Zhou Yuncheng and lowered his head to pick up the wood on the ground. Wow dad. Mom. Look. It's really broken from the middle. That's it. Zhou Yuncheng smiled and took the wood, thinking to himself, I can't explain this problem to you with force, I can only do an experiment directly. But this beam broke off from the tenon position, Zhou Yuncheng said. So, it's not a problem with the quality of the wood, but rather, Zhou Yuncheng paused and said, it's human-made. How do you say that? Prince Jing asked. Because half of the cross dot section is very neat, Zhou Yuncheng said. Section. Everyone was puzzled again. That's it. Zhou Yuncheng pointed to the area where the tenon broke, and sure enough, half of the area was neatly cut. She continued, if the material had broken itself, there wouldn't have been such a neat section. You can take a look at the thinner wood that just broke. Everyone looked up and as Zhou Yunqing said, the cross dot sections were uneven. So, Zhou Yunqing explained, glanced at everyone, and finally fixed his gaze on Prince Jing's face. Someone sawed half of the tenon first, so the wooden beam cannot bear someone standing on it and breaking it. Beautiful sister, you're amazing. Luo Tian spoke again at this moment, looking at Zhou Yunqing's eyes full of worshipped stars. But Prince Jing and Princess Jing still didn't speak up, as if they still had some doubts. If both of you still have doubts, Zhou Yunqing continued, we have complete procurement information here, including the quality sampling situation of each batch, which can be consulted with you. After that, he gestured to Lao Zhang to present the materials she had sorted out on the carriage to Prince Jing. Previously, I only heard that the lady of the Zhou family was shrewd and capable. I didn't expect that the daughter of the Zhou family would also be so intelligent, Prince Jing praised. Thank you, Prince Jing. Mrs. Zhou, seeing the situation was good, spoke up in a timely manner. Can you first notify the government to release my master, and then continue to investigate in the direction described by Yuna? That's for sure. Prince Jing replied, someone, go to the government office immediately to pick up Mr. Zhou. In the evening, I will hold a banquet for Mr. Zhou's wife and Miss Zhou to surprise her. Yes. The butler immediately took the servant and called Lao Zhang to leave with the ledger. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Crown Prince Transformation. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Crown Prince Transformation The banquet at Prince Jing's mansion has begun. 
In order to express his apologies, Prince Jing specially asked the butler to find a singer and dancer to perform. Today's matter is that we have no way to handle it, Prince Jing picked up his cup and said to the Zhou family's master, wife, and Zhou Yinchen, fortunately, Miss Zhou was intelligent and clever, and resolved the misunderstanding in a timely manner. Prince Jing's words are too serious. It's a routine for the people in the government to call me over, and there's nothing inappropriate. Prince Jing doesn't need to worry about it, said Mr. Zhou in an official tone. Madame Zhou was also shocked today. Once the government finds out the truth, we will definitely investigate to the end. Princess Jing also spoke at this moment and said to Madame Zhou and Zhou Yunchen, Miss Zhou is so knowledgeable about woodworking skills, which is rare. Prince Jing, Empress Jing is highly praised. Zhou Yunchen also raised his glass and said, in fact, the government can easily investigate these matters. The foreman went in a hurry, and they haven't had time to investigate yet. After three rounds of drinking, they each started chatting, while Zhou Yunqing watched the performance while drinking on his own. These little girls are pretty good, beautiful, Zhou Yunqing thought to herself, drinking happily. Beautiful sister likes to drink. Luo Tian leaned in at this moment. He had already changed his coarse cloth shorts and put on a green base embroidered with dark patterns in his luxurious attire. Mmm. Zhou Yunqing had always been a good drinker in her previous life, and she had a capacity of three liang. Later on, because she occasionally went to drink, her alcohol tolerance continued to improve. Perhaps drinking less could give Zhou Yunqing a few more years to live, and she secretly felt bitter about herself. Then you must taste it well, Luo Tian said. The wine in our Prince Jing's mansion is not something you can drink anywhere else. Why, Fei Tian Mao Tai? Zhou Yunqing, after three rounds of drinking, was already slightly tipsy and began to speak casually. With so many beautiful women at the moment, if I were to watch the dance, I still prefer to drink wine. Yes, I'll go get it for you, Luo Tian said before getting up and walking outside. Crown Prince, Crown Prince, Luo Tian's maid followed behind and called out, You just drank so much wine, don't run around. Zhou Yunqing looked at the back of Luo Tianpi running out and thought to himself, This young master has such a temperament. Fortunately, he can live a stable life in such a wealthy family. If it were in my era, I don't know how much malice I would have to face. Thinking of the era she used to be in, Zhou Yunqing inexplicably felt a bit down in her heart. Although I died normally and came from an orphan background, there were still many friends there, and I missed them to some extent. Thinking of this, Zhou Yunqing felt a bit stuffy in her chest. Perhaps she had drunk too much, she thought, got up and walked out, intending to go out and get some air. Xing'er saw this and followed up with a cloak. The moon here is really big, Zhou Yunqing muttered to himself. When the wind blew, she woke up quite a bit from drinking. Moving forward, there was a pond. Under the moonlight, Zhou Yunqing saw several lotus flowers inside, as if a thin layer of gauze had been painted under the silver moonlight. Miss, don't catch a cold, Xing'er said, taking a cloak and putting it on Zhou Yunqing. Thank you. Zhou Yunqing smiled at Xing'er with a flushed face. Xing'er was immediately mesmerized by the sight. Turning her head, Zhou Yunqing approached the pond and crouched down, wanting to reach out and pull the lotus flower in the pond. Miss, be careful. Xing'e regained her composure and followed Zhou Yunqing three steps in two, squatting beside the lotus pond. That one looks the best, Zhou Yunqing said with a smile. Picking one quietly here shouldn't be noticed by anyone, right? Miss, this is Prince Jing's mansion, Xing'e smiled and said, isn't that too good? You don't understand, Zhou Yuncheng still drank a little too much, with a hint of coquettishness in her voice, and then said to Xing'e, if there are flowers, they can be folded straight and must be folded. Don't wait until there are no flowers, they can be folded in vain. What a beautiful man with flowers that can bend straight, don't wait for no flowers to break branches in the air. A cold male voice suddenly sounded from behind, 
startling Zhou Yunchen and wanting to turn around to see who it was. Unexpectedly, Xinger happened to step on Zhou Yunchen's cloak. Zhou Yunchen got up halfway and was tripped by the cloak, stumbling and about to fall into the pool. Zhou Yunchen's drinking power had not fully dissipated yet, and he was shrouded in mist. He could only let his body lean back, his hands still instinctively scratching in the air. At this moment, a black figure flashed before my eyes, grabbed my hand, and was taken back to the ground by the pool. Is this the legendary likeness skill? A wave of respect surged in Zhou Yunqing's heart. Upon regaining consciousness, I realized that I had already nestled in the embrace of the dark shadow. This material is also too beautiful. Zhou Yunqing looked at the black black robe with a golden background just within reach and couldn't help but touch it. However, she didn't expect to be pushed out and fell heavily to the ground. Now, Zhou Yunqing's wine is completely awake. Such a good moonlight, there was still a hint of alcohol in the beginning, and it was hazy. Such a good mood, it was all ruined by you. Zhou Yunqing complained while looking up at who was so disappointing, and at first glance, she was confused. The spacious black robe could not conceal the upright figure of this person. The golden pattern embroidered on the robe faintly emitted a golden light under the moonlight, and strangely blended with the silver moonlight on the robe, as if there were boundaries and interweaving with each other. Looking up, is it a thin neck and a familiar face? Zhou Yunqing felt that she must have known this face, but the person in front of her was definitely not recognized. How could there be such a strange feeling? As Zhou Yunqing stood up and patted the dust on her body, she thought to herself, how could I possibly know someone like this who is too close to strangers and could kill you with a single blow? At this moment, the panicked voice of Xing'er behind her sounded, I have seen the crown prince. Sure enough, isn't this face the face of the innocent Prince Jing, Luo Tian? But now, this person with a cold aura all over his body is really the same Luo Tian as before. Luo Tian glanced at Xing'er and looked at Zhou Yunchen, saying, it seems that the crown prince is still disturbing Miss Zhou's elegance. Zhou Yunqing's mouth twitched and he could only grit his head in response, No, no, I coveted the lotus flowers in your mansion first. It's really not right. Luo Tian sneered and said, That's right, Miss Zhou. It's not your thing, don't think so. After speaking, Luo Tian turned around and left, leaving Zhou Yunqing with a black line on his face. Where are these all from? It's just a lotus, it's all using, Xiao Xiang. Besides, I haven't picked it at all. Zhou Yunqing lost his interest in continuing to stroll and went back unhappy. After she left, under the big tree by the pond stood Luo Tian, who had just talked to her. I saw Luo Tian say to a figure, How dare you take action at my mansion? Who gave you the courage? Yes, I'm sorry. Crown Prince. A familiar female voice rang out, and the moon emerged from the clouds. The moonlight spread over the earth again, illuminating the female voice's face clearly. Surprisingly, it was Xing'er. Xing'er was clearly a bit scared and said with a trembling voice, she managed to escape from poisoning last time, but I was just a little anxious. She can't die in the Prince Jing's mansion, Luo Tian interrupted coldly. Moreover, her performance today. Don't take action yet, wait for my command. Yes, Xing'er said before bending down and leaving. Crown Prince, Lao Zhang has already told the people in the government office. After Xing'er left, a person hidden under the shadow of a tree spoke. Well, handle it clean and don't let anyone talk, Luo Tian said. I understand. After speaking, the person disappeared under the tree shadow. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Living a lifetime, one will eventually be lonely. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Living a lifetime, one will eventually be lonely the next day, Zhou Yuncheng slept comfortably until the morning. Miss, Mississippi Little Li Hua ran to Zhou Yuncheng's bed and said, When do you plan to get up? Madam has asked several times already. Xia Lihua. 
Keep your voice down, didn't you see that miss has already opened her eyes? Xingyu gently scolded Xia Lihua as she brought water to wash Zhou Yunqing's face. Can I just have lunch now? If I'm hungry, what should I have for lunch? Zhou Yunqing stretched lazily and sat up. Madam said she will come over to eat with you, said Little Pear Flower. I'll go tell Madam that you're awake now. After speaking, she ran out excitedly. What is she happy about? Zhou Yunqing asked Xing'er while washing her teeth. She heard about your actions in the Prince Jing's mansion yesterday and admired you so much. Xing'er said while serving Zhou Yunqing, I woke up today and couldn't wait to come and serve you. She's really a little girl, Zhou Yunqing said. Look at what Miss said, Xing'er continued, Miss is only 15 years old. After washing up, Zhou Yunqing and Mrs. Zhou dined together in Zhou Yunqing's courtyard. You can leave everything here and go out. We don't need you to serve us for now, Mrs. Zhou said. Yes. Autumn fragrance and spring fragrance, along with apricot blossoms and small pear blossoms, all responded before retreating. Only when everyone had gone out did Zhou Fu speak up. Hello, Zhou Yunqing. My name is Cheng Ruashi and I am a chef. Chef. No wonder I heard you were a famous cook before, Zhou Yunqing replied. That was before. When I first crossed over, my family was not very well dot off, so I started from scratch in my old profession and started making pastries, creating my first family business. I see, so we did indeed travel through time. What dynasty is it now? Zhou Yunqing asked eagerly. I don't know, I haven't heard of this dynasty before, and we don't necessarily come from the same era either. What does this mean? Zhou Yunqing looked confused. Let me start from scratch. Cheng Ruashi rationalized his thoughts and said, This is a place called Luo Dynasty, and the social structure is not much different from what we commonly understand as a feudal dynasty. However, the productivity of this society is still good, mainly because it is different from other feudal dynasties. They value the development of heavy industry and commerce very much. No wonder the people of Prince Jing's mansion are quite polite to us, said Zhou Yunchen. This is a long story, let me explain the specific reason to you later when I have the opportunity. Cheng Ruashi continued, as for Zhou Yunchen, she was originally born to Zhou Wen and another woman. That woman, after giving birth to Zhou Yunchen, bled heavily and died. Later, Zhou Wen and I neglected to discipline due to our careers, and she developed an arrogant temperament. It seems like I've heard Xing Er say it, Zhou Yunqing continued, feeling puzzled in her heart. Although it wasn't her own, after living together for so long, how could she not see Cheng Ruashi feeling any sadness? But in fact, if Zhou Yunqing knew how the mother of the original owner became pregnant, she would know that Cheng Ruashi's ability to take care of the original owner was already compassionate. Yes, telling you her original temperament is to prepare you mentally, Cheng Ruashi said. What psychological preparation? Zhou Yunqing asked. Basically, the reputation in the city is relatively poor, Cheng Ruashi smiled and said, you might get some bad looks. Zhou Yunqing was a bit speechless. Actually, there's no need to worry too much. After all, with the Zhou family here, no one should do anything out of line. Cheng Ruashi continued, in addition, the Zhou family has two daughters, Zhou Yuning and Zhou Yunju. You will see them later. Is it your daughter and Mr. Zhou's daughter? Zhou Yunqing asked. Cheng Ruashi's eyes darkened and he immediately regained consciousness, saying, no, it was born to him and his concubine. Oh, I'm sorry, Zhou Yunqing replied, feeling a bit awkward. But because they all traveled through time, Zhou Qingyun felt like she could feel the sadness hidden by Cheng Ruashi. After all, in that place before, monogamy was deeply ingrained in people's hearts, and no one should be able to accept sharing their husband with other women. Don't be embarrassed, although the idea of favoring men over women here is not as serious as we remember, it is still a typical patriarchal society. So this kind of thing is inevitable. Cheng Ruashi smiled calmly. 
Next, Zhou Yinchen briefly introduced her situation to Cheng Ruashi, including her previous experience as an architectural designer who died from a terminal illness and had no particularly deep concerns about her past life. No wonder you were so skilled yesterday, Cheng Ruashi said. It's all superficial. Zhou Yinching is not humble, because whether it's the account book or the stress situation of the wood, it's actually other professional matters. To outsiders, it's just the same. What I mentioned earlier was all about the basic situation. Ching Ruashi saw that Zhou Yinching had nothing else to say, so he straightened up and said, There are two points I want to emphasize for you below. Seeing Ching Ruashi so formal, Zhou Yinching unconsciously sat up straight. Firstly, there are more than just the two of us travelers in this world. If you encounter them, be careful. I'm a bit strange. Why did you see me so calm at first? Have you ever encountered other travelers? Yes, that was a long time ago. Cheng Ruashi's eyes were a bit ethereal, as if recalling something from a long time ago. Then he gathered his thoughts and continued, I couldn't find the pattern of the time traveler, but one thing I know is that the names before and after the time traveler are the same. No wonder the original owner of this body is also called Zhou Yuncheng. So why did you just say that we don't necessarily come from the same era? Zhou Yunqing still had doubts. I wore it in 2011, which year are you? Cheng Ruashi asked. 2023, said Zhou Yunqing truthfully. It seems that I'm right. Most of them are travelers from this era, Cheng Ruashi continued, but I have also encountered travelers from the Republican era. The Republic of China. Zhou Yunqing was surprised. Yes, and the history she mentioned is different from what we know. The history she mentioned did not include the Qing dynasty, Cheng Ruashi said. Does it mean there is a concept of parallel spacetime? Zhou Yunqing felt that this world was too powerful. I don't know, Cheng Ruashi replied, seemingly recalling the time travelers he had met before. However, these seem to have little impact here now, but as I said before, when encountering time travelers, don't take them lightly. Why do you say that? Zhou Yunqing was puzzled. The time traveler I met before, I reciprocated with kindness, but someone caused my family to perish. Cheng Ruashi didn't want to say anything specific, as she didn't want to look back on that past. Why did you save me? pursued Zhou Yunqing. At the beginning, of course, it was because if you were identified as a fake corpse, our whole family would suffer along with you. You, I had to save you, Cheng Ruashi said sincerely as he looked into Zhou Yunqing's eyes. But yesterday you did your best to save Zhou Wenwen, and I am grateful. So, I hope we can get along harmoniously. Okay, what's the second point you're going to make? Zhou Yunqing didn't want to dwell on it too much, feeling like it didn't make much sense. The second point is that you have an engagement with Luo Tian, Cheng Ruashi said naturally after taking a sip of soup. Zhou Yuncheng, however, stared in anger and stuttered in place. We encountered some small problems in our business before, and only Prince Jing could solve them. So when Prince Jing proposed a marriage alliance, we had no choice, said Cheng Ruashi. Zhou Yuncheng also agrees. Zhou Yuncheng, of course, refers to the original owner. She's very happy, Cheng Ruashi said, seeing Zhou Yuncheng's face full of disbelief, and then explained, Did you see that Luo Tian yesterday? His mind was lower than that of an ordinary person, so you think Zhou Yuncheng wouldn't agree? Not entirely, Zhou Yuncheng said hesitantly, recalling the Luo Tian she had seen at night. Huh, Cheng Ruashi smiled and said, I really like your temperament. But the original Zhou Yuncheng is much smarter than you imagine. She may value Luo Tian's identity, and when she heard that someone needed to marry him, she volunteered. Cheng Ruashi said, although Luo Tian may have some intellectual flaws, he is a legitimate Prince Jing. Based on her previous reputation and the fact that our Zhou family is in business, marrying into the royal family, no matter how you look at it, is always a high priority. Didn't you say you value industry and commerce? Zhou Yunqing pouted, and how bad was her reputation before? 
No matter how much you value it, it's not as important as imperial relatives, Cheng Ruashi said. As for how bad it is, you will know later. After speaking, Cheng Ruashi had almost finished eating and wiped his mouth before getting up to leave. That's about it. If you have anything to ask, feel free to contact me anytime. Cheng Ruashi suddenly remembered something and turned back, saying, Oh by the way, etiquette is not important, but it's better not to make mistakes in your way of addressing me and Zhou Wan. Cheng Ruashi spoke politely, because she considered that it would be difficult for her to accept calling two completely unfamiliar people father and mother. Got it, mom. Unexpectedly, Zhou Yunqing blurted it out. For her, she had no parents in her past life, and when she was a child, she longed for a period of family affection, but later she opened up. A person who lives a lifetime will eventually be lonely, why bother with these illusions? Cheng Ruashi was momentarily taken aback, then smiled contentedly and left. What were everyone doing in 2011? End of this chapter Chapter 6 Old Zhou Dies You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Old Zhou Dies Since crossing over, Zhou Yinqing's body has lost its previous pain, and she feels very relaxed. In addition, now that I am dressed in such a wealthy home, wouldn't I be able to break free from my previous identity as a bull and horse, completely lie flat, and become a carefree and brainless daughter? Upon this thought, Zhou Yincheng slept incredibly soundly. After sleeping until dawn and finishing breakfast, Zhou Yincheng strolled into Cheng Ruashi's courtyard. Mother, good morning, Zhou Yincheng exclaimed very fluently. Good morning. Cheng Ruashi also had breakfast and seemed to be preparing to go out. I have something to ask you, Zhou Yinqing said. As a daughter with such a large family, can I completely lie flat and do whatever I want? Lie flat. Cheng Ruashi was puzzled. Zhou Yinqing only remembered that there was no such statement in 2011. Just don't do anything, just be a young lady, Zhou Yinqing explained. Of course not, Cheng Ruashi said, you are an architect and you happen to be supervising the work at Prince Jing's mansion, so as not to have another accident. Can't it be that the father of Party A used the designer as a supervisor again? Zhou Yunqing murmured silently in his heart. I originally wanted you to take a break before going tomorrow, Ching Ruashi saw Zhou Yunqing's expression of helplessness and felt a bit amused. He added, since you brought him to the door, let's go today. They are going to resume work today. Aren't you going? Zhou Yunqing asked. I need to go to the restaurant to handle some things, Cheng Ruashi replied and left with his people. Zhou Yunqing thought about why I had to do so much, while greeting Xing'er and Xia Lihua to prepare and taking them to the Prince Jing's mansion. As soon as I arrived at Prince Jing's mansion, I met the steward Wang whom I had seen yesterday. Miss Zhou is here, Wang, the butler, saw Zhou Yunqing and bowed. Hello, my mother called me. Zhou Yunqing thought for a moment and wanted to change her voice. I was ordered by my mother to come and see the construction of the garden. Madame Zhou has a heart, said housekeeper Wang, guiding Zhou Yunqing inside. When Zhou Yunqing came over yesterday, she only took a rough look at the garden being repaired. The weather is nice today, with bright sunshine, and the entire garden is fully presented before her eyes. This garden is located on the west side of the main hall of Prince Jing's mansion. After entering Prince Jing's mansion, you can walk through a long corridor and then pass through a simple blue stone arch to reach it. This garden is quite large, mainly used by ladies and gentlemen. Zhou Yunqing asked. No, the courtyard where Madam and Master Live has its own garden, replied housekeeper Wang. The Crown Prince and Miss also have their own gardens. Although they are not as big as this, they usually don't come out during normal times. This garden is mainly used when guests come, and when Madame and the Crown Prince and Miss are in good spirits, they come and explore. Is it for guests? Zhou Yunqing said, it's just so bare, just a pavilion is enough. Zhou Yunqing's statement has its own reason. 
In such a large garden, looking around, there is a pavilion in the center, while in other places, busy people are building flower beds and the like. It's not as good as the big pond I met with Luo Tian last time, Zhou Yinching thought to herself. Although it's also very monotonous, there's nothing except for the big pond. Well, most of the gardens in Luojing are like this. Steward Wang looked at Zhou Yinching strangely and said, If Miss Zhou is talking about a lotus pond, it usually extends to the outside of the mansion next to the side hall. After speaking, Steward Wang saw that Zhou Yinching was still looking around and bowed, Miss Zhou can check the various materials sent by your mansion here, and I will leave first. Okay, Zhou Yinchen waved her hand and said. Also, said housekeeper Wang before leaving, please try not to leave this garden as much as possible, Miss Zhou, to avoid unnecessary trouble. Got it, Zhou Yinchen replied. After housekeeper Wang left, Zhou Yinchen went to the pavilion yesterday to check. I saw two people looking at the wood there. This is Miss Zhou from the Zhou family, right? I am Li Changgong, taking over old Zhou's work. This is my son, you can call him Xiao Li. As Zhou Yunqing approached, the older person turned around and said. Hello, Li Changgong and Xiao Li, Zhou Yunqing said and walked over the two of them to the pile of wood. Are these woods okay? Miss Zhou, Li Changgong replied, it seems like there's no problem now, but we need to work hard to complete the installation in the next two days, otherwise. After speaking, he looked up at the sky, and Zhou Yinching naturally knew that if it rained, this pile of wood would be placed here, good or bad. Then you should hurry up, Zhou Yinching said. But safety comes first. You also know about old Zhou's situation, right? Before using wood, you should carefully check it to prevent anyone with ulterior motives. Thank you very much, Miss Zhou, for your concern. We will be more careful, said Li Changgong before continuing to work with Xiao Li. Zhou Yinching didn't disturb them anymore, but walked around and looked around. There are no quality issues with these things, Zhou Yinching thought to himself. It's just some flower garden stones and some cobblestones for paving walkways. This garden has nothing, and quality control is still very good. She was thinking this way when suddenly she heard a cheerful voice. Beautiful sister. It was Luo Tian who said, I heard them say you're here, and it's indeed you. Hello Crown Prince, Zhou Yinching thought of the last time she saw Luo Tian by the lotus pond and felt lingering fear. She kept a certain distance and bowed. Are you here to see that wood again? Luo Tian didn't realize Zhou Yinching's estrangement and said with a smile. Yeah, let's take a look, Zhou Yinching said. But it seems like there isn't anything nice either. After speaking, Zhou Yinqing looked at the long corridor when he came. Hey, by the way, what does your garden look like? Zhou Yinqing asked Luo Tian. My garden is much more beautiful than here, muttered Luo Tian. It's dusty everywhere here, there's not much fun. Beautiful sister, would you like to come and take a look at my garden? Okay. I'll go see what kind of beautiful garden you mentioned, said Zhou Yuncheng. So Luo Tian led Zhou Yuncheng along the long corridor, walked through the main hall, and headed north. Along the way, Zhou Yuncheng was observing the structure of the house. Even the simplest flush gable roof purlin, Zhou Yuncheng thought to himself. The waterproof and fire prevention are not good, and the space is not big. Old Zhou can't speak anymore. Just as Luo Tian and Zhou Yunqing entered the backyard, a deliberately lowered boy suddenly entered his ear. Old Zhou. Upon hearing the name, Zhou Yunqing was surprised and asked, Is it that old Zhou? Thinking of this, she pulled Luo Tian and hid at the corner, making a gesture of silence. That's good. A young female voice sounded, Have you packed up the prison yet? Well done, they're all done by skilled hands, I won't see any clues, the man's voice remained low. This is yours, take it, the female voice continued, you know, this matter must not be known by the prince. Do everything that should be done clean. Understood, girl, rest assured. 
Upon hearing this, there came the sound of footsteps, followed by the sound of opening the door. Zhou Yunchen quickly pulled Luo Tian away. Beautiful sister, Luo Tian also learned from the man just now and said in a low voice, What did you hear? I heard about old Zhou. Zhou Yunqing saw that they were already far away from the room and asked Luo Tian, How many old Zhou are there in your mansion? I don't know, Luo Tian spread out his hand. Why do I remember their names? Yes, the crown prince, young master. Zhou Yunqing felt that Luo Tian's answer was very reasonable. He was like a 14 year old pulling a little fart child, and had to hold it. But I'm willing to remember your name, pretty sister, Luo Tian suddenly changed his tone. What's your name, pretty sister? Now it's Zhou Yunqing's turn to be confused. If he were to pretend, he might have acted too naturally. I feel like the cold and cold Luo Tian who was thousands of miles away by the lotus pond last time is not the same person as the Luo Tian in front of me now. Do you have twin brothers? Zhou Yunqin racked her brains and finally came up with a possibility. How could it be, Luo Tian said with his head tilted back, Prince Jing's mansion has only one crown prince, this young master. That's not it. Zhou Yunqin thought to herself. How could there be such a coincidence? You haven't answered my question yet, Luo Tian interrupted Zhou Yunqing's inner play. What's your name? My name is Zhou Yunqing. Zhou Yunqing withdrew her thoughts and smiled at Luo Tian. Zhou Yunqing, Luo Tian repeated, the name sounds good, but the person looks better. Let's go, I'll take you to my garden. Luo Tian finally arrived at his garden with Zhou Yunqing. Is this what you call good dot looking? said Zhou Yunqing. Isn't this pretty? Luo Tian was very surprised when he heard Zhou Yunqing say this. My garden is among the best in the city of Luo Jing. Ah, this. Zhou Yunqing said it was difficult to agree. You have to say that this garden is much more beautiful than the one under construction and dusty just now. But let's go into detail. To be specific, Luo Tian was puzzled. Isn't it just a pavilion here, with a flower garden and trees? Zhou Yunqing said, not to mention the rockeries and flowing water, there isn't even a layer of shrubs. Luo Tian didn't speak, just looked at her thoughtfully. Look, Zhou Yunqing saw that he didn't understand her meaning. She walked to a tree in the garden and gestured, this tree, it's so tall. Then she pointed to the flower under her feet and said, look at this flower again. It's so low, isn't there a big space in the middle, without any sense of hierarchy? If we could introduce some shrubs and fill in the visual space in the middle, it would look much better, Zhou Yunqing said, and Luo Tian should understand. You look so cute with your gestures, Luo Tian said with a smile. Zhou Yunqing was a little speechless, but he didn't care too much. Instead, he roast in his heart about how he had committed an occupational disease. Moreover, her current focus is not on this either. She has more important things to do now. So she quickly found a reason to bid farewell to Luo Tian and went straight home to Cheng Ruashi's yard. Mother, how is the old Zhou who framed the Zhou family now? Has the government investigated it thoroughly? Zhou Yunqing asked as soon as she saw Cheng Ruashi. I just received news that he committed suicide in prison, Ching Ruashi said seriously as he looked at Zhou Yunqing. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Working as an undercover agent, naturally the kind. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 7 Working as an undercover agent, naturally the kind when Ching Ruashi and Zhou Yunqing arrived at the prison, Mr. Zhou had already arrived. Surprisingly, the newly appointed governor of Jingzhou, Zhao Li, received them, which gave Zhou Yunqing a more intuitive understanding of the status of industry and commerce in this era, and also made her admire the status of the Zhou family in the capital city of Luoyang once again. Mr. and Mrs. Zhou, Zhao Li said to the group, Changong Zhou Li was found hanging himself in a cell while distributing breakfast this morning. He should have committed suicide last night. 
Are you sure it was suicide? Zhou Yinching asked. Who is this? Zhao Li asked as she looked at Zhou Yinchen who suddenly spoke. This is my daughter, Zhou Yinchen, Mr. Zhou introduced. Oh, this is the famous Miss Zhou Yinchen from the Zhou family. I was impolite, Zhao Li's tone sounded strange, but he continued, I'm sure it was suicide. The coroner has examined the body, and he did die from suffocation without any other wounds on his body. Have you ever interrogated him before, did he say anything? Zhou Yinching asked. Miss Zhou, we reviewed him last night, Zhao Li replied. He was completely unaware of the fact that the wooden beam was artificially cut halfway before breaking, resulting in his nephew's death. He insisted that he believed there was a quality issue with the wood and came to this mansion to sue the Zhou family. It has not been confirmed yet that based on his own wishful judgment, he dares to cross over the Prince Jing's mansion and directly sue our Zhou family. Cheng Ruashi said in a deep voice, this Zhou Changgong is also very brave. Zhao Li was stunned by the sudden burst of aura from Cheng Ruashi and thought to herself. She had always heard about this female hero of Lady Zhou, and at this sight, her aura was truly extraordinary. Her ability to speak was not inferior to that of a man. But Zhao Li had also seen the world before, so he was not scared by such a sentence. He slowly spoke up and said, Madam Zhou, it was the nephew of Zhou Changgong who died at that time. He loved him very much and it was possible for him to do things beyond his control. According to the magistrate's instructions, Cheng Ruashi looked straight into Zhao Li's eyes and said, The verdict on this matter has already been made. Is it true that Zhou Changgong is unaware? We're not trying to come to a conclusion, Zhao Li said calmly. It's his death. We want to continue investigating, but there's no clue left. But before Cheng Ruashi could finish speaking, he was interrupted by Mr. Zhou. Madam, since the magistrate said so, that's it. After saying this, he turned to give Cheng Ruashi a glance and then turned to Zhao Li and said, Your Excellency, how do you plan to reply to Prince Jing's mansion? I have already sent someone to answer the Jingwang mansion, Zhao Li said. Of course, it is true. As soon as Zhou Changgong died, this line was cut off, and it can only be judged that he acted impulsively to sue the Zhou family. After learning the truth, he knew he could not bear the consequences and hung himself in prison. So what about the real culprit who saw it open the wooden beam? Zhou Yinching asked. We should naturally continue to investigate this, but Zhao Li thought for a moment and said, because the place of the accident is in Prince Jing's mansion, and the two who died were both long-term workers of Prince Jing's mansion who signed contracts of sale. If Prince Jing's mansion doesn't want to investigate again, then. What does Prince Jing's mansion say? Mr. Zhou continued. This is the cutting agreement signed by the Prince Jing's mansion. Zhao Li took out the prepared document and showed it to Mr. Zhou, then said, If there are no other issues, please ask Mr. Zhou to also sign and sign on the cutting agreement. Isn't that why we can't find it? Ching Ruashi thought for a moment and said to Mr. Zhou, Is it really the culprit? Madam, it's not urgent. Didn't the magistrate say so? If conditions permit, we will continue to investigate. Mr. Zhou said, If the Prince Jing's mansion thinks it's better to handle it this way, then let's do it for now. After speaking, Mr. Zhou signed the knot cutting book and stamped it with the seal he carried with him. After leaving Jingzhou Mansion, Ching Ruashi said, Zhou Wen, you just signed like this. Whoever wants to defame us won't be able to find out. In the future, not everyone thinks our Zhou family is so easy to handle, and anyone dares to step on us. That's right, in private, if she rarely calls him, Master, he always calls him by his first name. It's been so long, why don't you restrain your temper at all? Why didn't you check? On the contrary, we signed it to make that person relax their guard and better investigate. Besides, there's no need to directly confront Prince Jing's mansion now. I just saw that the signature is genuine. Is the meaning of Prince Jing's mansion making us dumbfounded? Cheng Ruashi was dissatisfied. Yuner, 
Why did you care so much about whether Zhou Changgong hanged himself just now? Mr. Zhou suddenly changed his tone and asked Zhou Yuncheng. Because I heard it today at Prince Jing's mansion, Zhou Yuncheng recounted the male-female conversation he heard in the Prince Jing's mansion in detail. So this time, is it the Prince Jing's mansion who is falsely accusing us? Cheng Ruashi felt a bit incredulous after hearing this. Zhou Wen, you and Prince Jing have always been good friends, which is why they decided to marry Luo Tian and Yun Er. Why did they do this? I also considered this possibility, so I just signed the agreement, Mr. Zhou said. But it's still too early to draw a conclusion. You don't know who the female voice Yun Er heard today is, do you? Well, it sounds like a young girl, Zhou Yunqing replied. Can it be Miss Luo from their family? Zhou Wen asked, you've dealt with her before. Zhou Yunqing couldn't figure out how to take the conversation for a moment. That one time, Cheng Ruashi said, Yun Er didn't quite recognize her voice, so it was reasonable. Indeed, that's true, Zhou Wen continued, Yun Er, there's something that only you can do now. What's up? Zhou Yunqing asked. Last time you cracked the issue of cutting off the wooden beam, Zhou Wen said, now the Prince Jing's mansion recognizes your abilities, so you can go to the Prince Jing's mansion regularly to check the quality without any problems. What do you mean? Zhou Yunqing continued. You find a way to stay there longer and look for any clues. Especially the female voice you heard today, Mr. Zhou said of his request. Okay, Dad. Actually, even if Mr. Zhou didn't say it, Zhou Yunqing planned it that way. Pay attention to safety, Mr. Zhou said before leaving. Yuner, Ching Ruashi turned to Zhou Yunqing after seeing Zhou Wen leave, Zhou Wen may have been suspicious. After all, your temperament is very different from the previous Zhou Yunqing. What should I do? Should I be a little more horizontal, said Zhou Yunqing. That's not necessary, Ching Ruashi said. If it's really not possible, I can only tell him the truth. Can he accept it? Zhou Yunqing said. After all, it's his own daughter, although she doesn't have much emotional connection, sighed Cheng Ruashi, which was also why she didn't tell Zhou Wen from the beginning. She glanced at Zhou Yunqing and continued, but he knows my true identity and has seen other travelers, so it shouldn't be too difficult. He knows everything. Now Zhou Yunqing was surprised. She didn't expect Cheng Ruashi to have reached such a level. Do you think I just casually found someone to get married? Cheng Ruashi smiled and continued, All right, let's talk about this matter when it's appropriate. What's important now is the matter at hand. Well, don't you have any other clues on your end? If we want to investigate ourselves, can we still only start from Zhou Changgong's side? Zhou Yunqing said. Yes, actually, earlier today we received intelligence, Cheng Ruashi said, that Zhou Changgong suddenly purchased a large amount of land in the suburbs before. A large amount. Does that mean someone gave him money? Zhou Yunqing said, it seems that the suspicion of Prince Jing's mansion is too high. That's right, so although Zhou Wen didn't explicitly mention it earlier, Cheng Ruashi said, if you can find any clues in the Prince Jing's mansion now, it will be too important for us. I understand, Zhou Yunqing said, I think I have a way to appear in the Prince Jing's mansion for a long time without being suspected. Oh. What's the solution? Cheng Ruashi felt surprised this time. Material quality monitoring. This kind of reason is actually difficult to stay for a long time, Zhou Yunqing said. Every time a batch of materials enters the site, it takes a long time, and there is no reason to go and guard it every day. What do you think of? Cheng Ruashi thought to himself, if you're so professional, tell me I don't quite understand. Help them redesign the garden, Zhou Yunqing said. If we design the garden for them, we can naturally stay there and see if it achieves the effect I want. I can also provide on dot site guidance, and I can talk about anything they don't know. This is a good way, Cheng Ruashi said thoughtfully, but how do you convince Prince Jing? Our job is to handle the homeowner's father, Zhou Yunqing laughed. Cheng Ruashi was unaware of the severity. 
However, what Zhou Yunqing didn't expect was that she had come up with so many versions of plans and countless renderings in her mind, combined with a lot of rhetoric, and even selected a lot of plants and koi, all of which were not useful. Because of all this, Luo Tian helped her save time. End of this chapter Chapter 8 There are many small bridges and flowing water in one place, and there is no shortage of rockery koi. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 There are many small bridges and flowing water in one place, and there is no shortage of rockery koi, Madame Zhou, Princess Jing invites Miss Eyre to come over to the mansion for a chat. Wang Butler handed over the invitation and Chou Xiang presented it to Ching Ruashi. Ching Ruashi took the invitation and was slightly puzzled. Wang, the housekeeper, personally came to deliver the invitation. Do you know why it is necessary to formally invite the young lady to the mansion alone? Madame Zhou, it should be related to the construction of the garden, replied manager Wang directly. Oh. Ching Ruashi waited for him to continue. The queen has explained that if the lady asks about the reason for her visit to the palace, she must directly explain it. After all, Miss Eyre has not yet passed the door and frequently goes alone to the Prince Jing's mansion, fearing that there may be some petty people gossiping. The steward lowered his head and said in detail. The Empress Dowager has considered for us, Ching Ruashi clearly thought of something else in his heart, but did not express it. What does it mean to build gardens? As you know, Wang Butler, our Zhou mansion has always only provided building materials for the Wang mansion. Yes. But yesterday, the Crown Prince specifically met with Prince Jing and said that it was Miss Eyre who had exceptional talent in building gardens, and specifically requested that Miss Eyre be responsible for the construction of the royal garden. The steward Wang said, so the Queen invited Miss Eyre to come over, which was actually the intention of Prince Jing and the Crown Prince to discuss the relevant details of garden construction. Is it paid? Cheng Ruashi replied. Of course, Butler Wang paused for a moment and then said. Okay, Cheng Ruashi smiled and continued, please report to the Queen, Steward Wang. Yunqing will definitely arrive at the mansion on time. Yes, Butler Wang lowered his head and said, that old slave is leaving. Chiu Xiang, Ching Ruashi said, take housekeeper Wang out. Then he gave a wink. Chiu Xiang nodded and led the butler Wang out of the mansion. Arrived, handed a wallet to butler Wang. Steward Wang smiled and accepted it. Yuner, you really have a way. Ching Ruashi smiled and walked into Zhou Yinqing's yard, where she was buried in the design drawings. What are you talking about? Zhou Yunqing was a bit confused. Prince Jing's mansion has come to invite, Ching Ruashi said, wasn't it because you left an opening? Zhou Yunqing took the invitation from Prince Jing's mansion and asked Ching Ruashi about the situation. I just told him, I thought he didn't listen carefully. Zhou Yunqing recalled the day she introduced Luo Tian to the plan for the garden, feeling like he didn't listen attentively either. Anyway, what we want comes effortlessly, said Ching Ruashi. Does Prince Jing and Empress Jing care about anything? If Luo Tian asked me to repair the garden, they agreed. Zhou Yunqing looked at the table and drew his own design for the whole day, speechless. Luo Tian is the lifeblood of Prince Jing and Princess Jing, said Ching Ruashi. He has everything he wants that he can't get, even the ones in the palace. I remember he was still young that year, about six or seven years old. When he followed Prince Jing into the palace, he somehow fell in love with a night pearl that had just been presented as a tribute. The night pearl was very large and rare. His Majesty promised to give it to his beloved consort, Consort De, early on. But Luo Tian fell for it, and it was absolutely necessary. Although the Emperor was in a difficult situation, he still gave the night pearl to him. In fact, if it were other concubines, it might not cause any trouble. However, this virtuous concubine, her younger brother, is the Grand General of Jinshi. In fact, that night pearl was also a tribute from her younger brother, who sent it to the palace according to her sister's preferences. This is really amazing. 
It caused a stir in the court, and General Jinxi caused trouble for Prince Jing's mansion from all aspects, eventually kicking him onto a stone. Kicked onto a stone. Zhou Yunchen was puzzled. That's right, General Jinxi's accountant suddenly turned against him, Ching Ruashi said. He directly reported him for embezzling taxes and silver, privately raising troops, and other matters. Long Yen was furious. Although General Jinxi was not implicated in the Nine Clans, he was also executed by the whole family. Consort De naturally entered the Cold Palace. Cheng Ruashi finished speaking and looked at Zhou Yunchen. That's not that he wants the wind to get the wind or the rain to get the rain, Zhou Yunchen said. But it's also a chess piece that has been used, right? You're quite thorough, Cheng Ruashi smiled. Is he born like this, Crown Prince Luo Tian? Zhou Yunqing said, pointing to his brain. It seems not, Cheng Ruashi said. We didn't arrive in Luo Jing at the time, so we didn't know it very well. It is said that it was when I was very young, about two or three years old. Not long after Prince Jing continued playing, that's how it was, Zhou Yunqing said. My stepmother really didn't have a biological mother to take care of Zhou Dao, did she? Isn't Luo Tian the son of Princess Jing? Zhou Yunqing asked. That's right, Chen Ruashi said. The current Princess Jing continued her life after the death of the former Princess Jing. It is said that her background is not very good, but no one dares to say the specifics. However, it is widely rumored in Luo Jing that Princess Jing loves her crown prince Luo Tian to the bone, especially her mother. It is said that she blamed herself for Luo Tian's sudden illness. Since then, she has taken care of Luo Tian meticulously, and everything has followed Luo Tian's wishes. What exactly is the disease? Zhou Yunqing asked. I don't know, Cheng Ruashi continued, although he was young, Luo Tian was extremely intelligent. At the age of one, he was already able to walk briskly and answer people fluently. By the age of two or three, he was already able to recite poetry and prose, and was particularly sensitive and proficient in arithmetic. However, after the continuation of the string, all his previous skills were suddenly gone, and he was still struggling. When he suddenly asked for something, his voice was much higher than before. Children, there are significant individual differences in their development, said Zhou Yuncheng. You seem to be very skilled, Cheng Ruashi smiled. Did you have any children before? The mother and fetus are single, said Zhou Yuncheng. No wonder it treats me so well, Cheng Ruashi said. Okay, since that's the case, Zhou Yuncheng said, I naturally went to the Prince Jing's mansion. By the way, if you want me to do something, will they give me money? Ha ha ha, Ching Ruashi laughed a few times this time. Of course we do. As merchants, we don't do business at a loss. Brainstorming is the most valuable. You can talk about it, but if you can't talk about it, I'll trade it for you. Reliable. Zhou Yuncheng also laughed along. The next day, Zhou Yuncheng arrived at Prince Jing's mansion on time. Yuncheng, Princess Jing saw Zhou Yuncheng and kindly pulled her over. Perhaps the housekeeper Wang has already talked to Lady Zhou, do you understand? Princess Hui, Zhou Yuncheng said, Mother has already told me. That's fine, but we still need to ask your wishes about this matter. If you don't want it, we can't force you. Princess Jing said, This soil is flying everywhere, it's already a man's business. If you don't want it, it's normal. I am very honored to be favored by the Prince Jing's mansion, said Zhou Yuncheng. Princess Jing was not surprised by her words, after all, everyone knows that Prince Jing will definitely get what he wants, and it is absolutely impossible to confront her forcefully. However, Zhou Yuncheng's next words caught her off guard. As long as the price is reasonable, our Zhou mansion can accept anything. Princess Jing looked at Zhou Yunqing in surprise, which was completely different from the reckless, ignorant, and eager Zhou Yunqing she had encountered before. Previously, 
although I specifically instructed the steward Wang to remember to say that it was paid when passing on messages to Cheng Ruashi, it was because Cheng Ruashi was a very famous businessman who never got up early without profit. But she had seen Zhou Yincheng several times before, and this time Miss Zhou was always holding her head in front of her, putting on a ladylike demeanor, desperately trying to wash away the merchant's mark from her. Now, openly bargaining with her about the price. That's natural, said Princess Jing with a lot of mental activity, but she didn't hesitate. Although you have an engagement with Tiana, after all, you haven't been married yet, and your biological brothers are still calculating their accounts. Thank you, Princess. That's good. Zhou Yunqing's heart still shook when she heard about the engagement. Then I thought again, now I can only take one step at a time. According to Cheng Ruashi's statement, the Prince Jing's mansion has spoiled Luo Tian into a lawless and lawless state, and there is no need for him to touch the mold. Then they seriously began discussing the fee standards for Zhou Yuncheng. Princess Jing originally intended to calculate the price based on the number of days of construction, but Zhou Yuncheng took the initiative to propose that she could delay the construction period and increase the price. She then suggested charging according to the size of the garden. Princess Jing also felt that it was reasonable, so this matter was settled. They discussed this matter for a long time, and before they knew it, Prince Jing had already returned, while Luo Tian also heard the news and ran over with him. Zhou Yuncheng After knowing her name, Luo Tian didn't call her pretty sister anymore. Why didn't you tell me when you came? Look at you, Princess Jing said, Miss Zhou is here to discuss the construction of the garden. What have you been notified of? I asked her to repair the garden, of course she should inform me. Luo Tianbai glanced at Princess Jing and then ran to Zhou Yuncheng with a smile. How are you doing? Have you figured out how to build it? When you told me last time what's missing from my small garden, I thought about it. You should repair this big one first. If it's really as good as you said, I'll let you repair it and I'll live there. Isn't it all about starting experiments from a young age? Zhou Yunqing was puzzled, that's different. That's my crown prince's garden, it must be the most important, Luo Tian said with his head twisted. Good good, Princess Jing said indulgently, you have the final say. However, Luo Tian did not take her words and instead pulled Zhou Yunqing to pass by Princess Jing. Take a walk, go to the garden and tell the prince how you plan to repair our garden. I heard that Zhou Yuncheng was going to talk about how the garden would be designed. Princess Jing invited Prince Jing to join her in the dusty garden. Zhou Yuncheng was pulled by Luo Tian and walked along the blue stone corridor to the entrance of the garden. She saw this garden, which she had reviewed countless times in her mind a few days ago, covering a small area of 100 acres. It's too wasteful to just build a pavilion in such a large garden and have all the other areas covered in flower beds. My preliminary idea is that the pavilion has already been repaired. Don't waste it, keep it. Chinese-style gardens emphasize five steps, one scenery, and ten steps, one painting. We can extend outward from the pavilion as the center. The middle circle creates a lake view, where pavilions, towers, and artificial mountains and flowing water can all be found. We can also raise some fish in the lake. Further outside, you can create some small gardens, also known as within the garden. They can be divided into rockeries and potted plants and if possible, some decorative fake walls can also be built. Another point is that in order to have a better view, a viewing corridor should be built around the lake. The corridor should not be like this one that enters. Instead, it should have a monotonous color tone of blue bricks and tiles. You can try adding some eye dot catching colors to complement the green plants and red flowers. The connection between the long corridor and the central pavilion is achieved through exquisite and diverse landscape bridges. As for plants, I have seen before that the Jingwang Mansion uses a wide variety of plants, but most of them are precious flower materials which is certainly good. However, as I mentioned before, there are no layers and the flowering period is similar. We can try adding shrubs to enrich our visual experience. 
We also need to pay attention to the seasonal combination of plants and try to make the entire garden beautiful throughout the four seasons. Zhou Yunqing finished speaking in one breath and turned to look at the stunned crowd, making a summary. In short, there are many small bridges and flowing water in one place, and no shortage of rockery koi. After speaking, she looked at everyone with a smile on her face, wanting to see how the fathers of Party A reacted. In fact, she still has several versions in her mind, but this one is obviously the most effective and visually stunning, so Zhou Yunqing herself tends to prefer this version. She thought. Anyway, this is roughly the case for now, and there will definitely be specific adjustments in the future. Everyone looked at Zhou Yunqing, who was talking in a lively manner, dumbfounded. Zhou Yunqing was hesitating whether the plan was unsuccessful, but Prince Jing took the lead in applauding. The rest of the crowd also reacted and joined in. In Luo Tian's eyes, there was a dazzling light, as if he had seen the brightest star in his life. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Hello, Mother, Awesome! You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Hello, Mother, Awesome Cheng Ruashi listened to Zhou Yunqing's talk about her plan to establish a powerful presence in the Prince Jing's mansion, and seemed a bit worried. Yuner, Cheng Ruashi said, some designs you may find easy to implement because your thinking is still stuck in 2023. One thing I have to remind you is that the current level of creation cannot be compared to that time. There are many details that you have to carefully consider before implementing. Zhou Yunqing looked at Cheng Ruashi, a 40-year-old and charming woman with a neat bun and simple jewelry. Her eyebrows and eyes were calm and confident, and she looked just like the elite female bosses she had encountered in the workplace before. But now, she is sincerely reminding Zhou Yunqing of the pitfalls he may encounter, which Zhou Yunqing had never thought of and felt a bit scared. Zhou Yunqing is an orphan who has never received the care of her parents. After reaching adulthood, due to factors in the upbringing environment, it is also difficult to have girlfriends who can be confided in. In her past life, she struggled and struggled on the path of design, never having anyone guide her. Everything relied on her own exploration, falling into countless pitfalls and gradually reaching the position of the main creator. Yuner, what are you thinking? Ching Ruashi looked at a place in a daze as Zhou Yunqing didn't answer. Zhou Yunqing regained her senses and looked at Ching Ruashi with a smile. I was thinking, Mom, you're a chef. Can you make fish-flavored shredded pork? I'm a white case, Cheng Ruashi didn't expect her to say this. Do you know what I just told you? I know, I will be cautious, Zhou Yunqing said, but I have heard that you can not only make dim sum, but also many famous dishes, otherwise it is impossible to have such a big family business as the Zhou family. I want to eat fish-flavored shredded pork. I asked the small kitchen last time, and they said they had not heard of it. It's not that I don't want to make it, Ching Ruashi said. I've already made Duban sauce, you know. Well, last time I had the twice-cooked pork cooked in the small kitchen, it was delicious. Did they feel shocked when they first ate it? Zhou Yunqing could fully imagine how amazing it would be to taste a strong and spicy Duban sauce for the first time in a place with a single seasoning. Indeed, Ching Ruashi said with a hint of pride on his face, but you know, the fish aroma is a very famous compound flavor in Sichuan cuisine. It's not something that can be made with just a single flavor of Duban sauce. I actually wanted to make it a long time ago, but at that time, I was missing a flavor of spices. What spices? Sichuan pepper. Sichuan pepper. Zhou Yunqing was a bit puzzled. I have never eaten fish-flavored shredded pork with Sichuan pepper before. It's not in the dish, it's for making kimchi, Ching Ruashi said as if thinking of something. He clapped his hands and said, Yuner. That's a good idea for you. Wait a minute. I'll treat you to fish-flavored shredded pork in half a month. Isn't there no Sichuan pepper? A few years ago, a businessman brought over from the West. After speaking, Ching Ruashi clapped his hands and took big steps before leaving. It's still half a month, she didn't hear Zhou Yunqing wailing behind her. 
For the past half month, Zhou Yincheng has been working tirelessly in the Jingwang mansion, commanding several construction teams to work together in an orderly manner. The rough outline of the garden has already been formed. Of course, there were still many problems encountered during this period, such as Zhou Yincheng's proposal to divert the water from the lotus pond outside into an artificial lake. Because the water in the lotus pond is drawn from the river, she believes that as long as the bottom of the artificial lake is dug lower than the lotus pond, this can be easily achieved. However, several experienced craftsmen told Zhou Yuncheng that due to the difference in water volume between high and low periods in rivers, such a large artificial lake is prone to drying up. Upon careful consideration, Zhou Yuncheng realized that during the dry season of her previous life, there should have been artificial watering. She herself was not originally from a background in landscape design, so she should still listen to the opinions of professionals. So the design plan was adjusted to reserve half of the lake and the other half as a garden within the park in the previous reserve plan. Several small gardens are strung together and connected by a cobblestone walkway, forming a streamlined closed dot loop viewing route along the observation corridor by the lake. The revised design once again received praise from Prince Jing and Princess Jing, as well as unanimous agreement from experienced craftsmen. Zhou Yuncheng then calmly instructed everyone to start construction. Until half a month later today, Zhou Yuncheng's carriage suddenly stopped on the way back from Prince Jing's mansion to Zhou's mansion. What's wrong? Zhou Yuncheng lifted the curtain and leaned out to ask the servant driving the car, Lu Er. Miss, there are too many people here. Zhou Yuncheng followed the crowd and was actually queuing up. This road is already narrow, with a long queue winding along this small path, making it impossible for the carriage to pass through. What's ahead? Zhou Yuncheng has been living a life of two points and one line in the Jingwang Mansion and Zhou Mansion since crossing over, and has never visited this Luojing city. Miss, the front is our restaurant headquarters. Lu Er was obviously a bit confused when asked by Zhou Yuncheng. Zhou Yuncheng is a bit awkward because Mr. Zhou said that it is not appropriate to publicize her amnesia to the public, so not many people know about her amnesia. Plus, she has been very busy since waking up, and most of the time she is at Prince Jing's mansion, so there are not many places to be exposed. I happen to be hungry. Zhou Yuncheng could only forcefully shift the topic and turn to Xing'er who was following below, saying, let's go there and have some food before we leave. After speaking, Zhou Yuncheng got off the car and let Lu Er drive the carriage first. She walked with Xing'er to the restaurant. They walked along the queue and found that the end of the queue was the main restaurant of the Zhou family. Xinghua Village. Is business so good? Zhou Yuncheng was a bit surprised. She heard that the process was successful in business, but she didn't expect it to be so popular. Isn't this queue more terrifying than when those internet celebrity stores opened in the previous life? Business has always been good, Xing'e replied, but it's the first time I've seen it like this today. Will we? Without a seat, the servant at the door had already noticed them. Miss Air, the servant shouted. Zhou Yuncheng was still a bit uncomfortable, but Xing'er welcomed her first. Miss Air said she's hungry, come and have dinner. Okay, please come inside. The servant quickly welcomed the two of them in. Whispering discussions came from behind. Why don't they queue up? You didn't hear me, that's Miss Zhou from the Zhou family. Is it just being ignorant and ignorant, yet being rude and unreasonable? Shu, keep it down. Don't provoke her. What's going on? Didn't you hear that? A child blocked her carriage before, and she had someone kill that child alive. Really? It's just a rumor, because it's late at night and there are few people on the street, not many people see it. It's just pity for that little child, the next day on the road, only cold corpses were seen. The people in the government office don't care. I checked, but there's no evidence. Zhou Yuncheng didn't hear these words and followed Xing'er straight in. Miss Air, Madam happens to be in the store. Do you want to inform her? The servant asked. If she's busy, don't disturb her, Zhou Yuncheng said. 
Has business always been this good here? It's not common for such a long team, mainly because yesterday my wife introduced a new dish, the servant replied. New dish. Fish-flavored shredded pork. Zhou Yunqing became excited. What? What shredded meat? The servant was puzzled. It's nothing, it's okay. Zhou Yunqing was a bit disappointed. Sitting by the window on the second floor, Zhou Yunqing chose a few dishes she liked. Looking at the long queue downstairs, she admired Cheng Ruashi from the bottom of her heart. With our mother's level, if we put it in 2023, the entire internet celebrity chain will bloom everywhere. Oh, isn't this Zhou Yunqing? A strange voice sounded, and Zhou Yunqing withdrew his thoughts. Turning around, I saw three young ladies dressed up and walking towards me. The leader was wearing a pink light veil, layered in layers that looked very beautiful, and the last two of them also looked like wealthy families. Zhou Yunqing is afraid of revealing her true feelings, so she finds it difficult to speak up. I heard yesterday that your mother launched a new dish, so today we'll come and cheer up. How about that? It's very embarrassing, isn't it? Do you want to thank you, sister? Sister Rong, don't say that. This is not her biological mother. She probably doesn't want to be too involved with people like her. Ha ha ha, it makes sense. A woman of unknown origin or a murderer, who dares to get involved with her. Is this what Cheng Ruashi said about being excluded? Zhou Yunqing was a bit speechless. It wasn't her own mother who had heard of it, but where did the murderer start? Are you in line? Zhou Yunqing suddenly looked at the woman in pink, who was called Sister Rong and said. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sister Rong replied. I didn't queue up, I came in directly, Zhou Yunqing didn't get up and glanced at her sideways. So, do you understand what this means by, my own restaurant? So what about your family? Sister Rong said. So, are you talking about my own mother? So what? Zhou Yunqing said calmly, even though it's not your own mother, don't you have to queue up? You. Sister Rong didn't think of how to refute this sentence for a moment. It seemed like there was nothing wrong with it, and there seemed to be something wrong with it. And am I a murderer? Although Zhou Yunqing doesn't know the specific situation, she still knows how to show off on her lips. So why am I sitting here now? Are you saying that even under the feet of the emperor, heaven doesn't have eyes? You. Sister Rong didn't know how to answer these words. She said yes or no. All right, let's go back and have dinner. Don't be so boring, Zhou Yunqing said, ignoring the three of them and drinking tea on her own. Upon seeing this, the three of them realized they couldn't gain any advantage and returned to their positions. And Cheng Ruashi, who had originally arrived to save the scene, saw Zhou Yunqing handling it so confidently and stood in a hidden corner watching the battle. Seeing that Zhou Yunqing was completely unaffected, a smile appeared on his lips, and he whispered to the restaurant manager. After seeing them all disperse, I walked forward to talk to Zhou Yunqing. Yunar is here, Cheng Ruashi smiled brightly. Well, I thought I had some fish-flavored shredded meat to eat, Zhou Yunqing looked at Cheng Ruashi and said, forget it, it's been almost half a month now. It's still a few days away, Cheng Ruashi said. In a few days, it will be exactly half a month. I guarantee you'll get it. What is your new dish? As soon as Zhou Yunqing finished speaking, she heard a surprised voice. How refreshing is this little dish? Cheng Ruashi and Zhou Yunqing followed the sound and saw that they were the three people who had just caused trouble. Who is that, said Zhou Yunqing. Miss Song of the Song family, Song Rongrong, she has an aunt who works as an empress in the palace, Cheng Ruashi said. How come I'm calling out to a little girl? Her mother has recently been granted a decree and is very proud. Just don't look for any presents on me anymore, Zhou Yunqing said discontentedly. As he was speaking, the waiter brought up all the dishes. Try it, but it shouldn't be as delicious as a small kitchen, Ching Ruashi said. Don't look at her either. Anyway, 
she won't benefit from you either. Zhou Yinqing lowered her head to look at the dishes, which were all home-cooked dishes. Almost all of them could be cooked in her small kitchen, but this won't be. Zhou Yinqing added a pink, translucent carrot that was cut into small squares. Taste it, Cheng Ruashi looked at her eagerly. Zhou Yinqing put the carrot in his mouth, and his entire mouth was instantly occupied by sourness. Chewing lightly with your teeth, the radish snapped with a crisp crisp. Mixed with a sour, spicy and slightly tingling taste, there is even a slight sweetness after chewing. The sweetness also blends perfectly with the previous flavors, without any abrupt or disconnected feeling. This one bite really makes your mouth water. Zhou Yunqing gave Cheng Ruashi a thumbs up and said, This bathing kimchi is amazing. Before she could finish speaking, she heard the restaurant manager below speaking to the queue of people. Ladies and gentlemen, as our shopkeeper has said, most of you are here to eat the newly launched side dishes. However, queuing up like this makes the road very crowded and hinders traffic, which has caused inconvenience to the neighbors for a long time. Therefore, if you are willing to queue up today, we will send you a voucher, which can be used to directly buy a newly launched side dish and pack it away. The next time you come to the store, you can still use this voucher to give the same side dish for free in the store. Of course, if anyone is still willing to queue up and wait, it is also possible. Now, please come and collect the voucher first for those who are willing to pack and take it away. The crowd surged, and almost everyone went to collect their tickets. Is it delicious? Cheng Ruashi smiled and said to Zhou Yunchen, the pickled peppers made from kimchi water can make fish-flavored shredded pork. Zhou Yunqing nodded repeatedly and then buried her head in cooking. After a while, Song Rongrong's voice rang out. Waiter. This. Pack me ten servings. So many, said the desk mate. It's a rare thing that I haven't tasted even in the imperial kitchen of the palace. I'll bring some for my aunt and parents to taste, said Song Rongrong. Miss, I'm sorry, we've sold out the pickled radishes in the store said the waiter. What? How could it be? Song Rong's voice increased by an octave. We came in so early, how could we have finished buying? The waiter recounted what had just happened to her once, and Song Rong Rong was so angry that she skipped her feet, but there was no other way. I just said it was for the show, but now I don't have to bring it and jump again, Zhou Yunqing said with a pout. She has always liked to use these to please her aunt, Ching Ruashi answered naturally. Is that so? Zhou Yunqing suddenly looked up at Ching Ruashi and said, Mom, you wouldn't have intentionally. Of course. Ching Ruashi smiled slightly and calmly glanced at Song Rongrong's side. It's not possible for her to bully her, whether it's biological or not. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Zhou Family Lunch Banquet You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Zhou Family Lunch Banquet The next day, when Zhou Yinqing got up, she felt her waist had thickened twice. It must have been because Ching Ruashi's pickled radish was too much to match the rice. Miss Air, today the master sent someone to ask how your body is recovering. If your body feels better, we will have lunch together at noon. Xing er said while grooming Zhou Yuncheng. So everyone usually eats together. Zhou Yuncheng was a bit surprised, to be honest, she can be said to have no experience in this area. Xing er is one of the few people who knows that she has amnesia, after all, she is a close maid and cannot hide it. No, Xing er combed Zhou Yuncheng's hair and took a bronze mirror to show her if she liked it. She continued, the master has set it for the fifteenth of each month, and we all have lunch together. Other times are temporary. Today is exactly 15, Zhou Yunqing said, will everyone participate? Most of the time. If the master has something to do, it will be postponed. Madam is sometimes too busy to attend, Xing er said. During these days, Zhou Yunqing also gained a rough understanding of the composition of the Zhou family's personnel. Actually, it's quite simple. Mr. Zhou's full name is Zhou Wan, the same age as Ching Ruashi, and he is in his prime. 
There is a mother above, not biological, but the legitimate mother of Mr. Zhou. His own biological mother passed away when Zhou Wen was fifteen years old. Zhou Wen had a wife and a concubine, and his wife Ching Ruashi met at the age of fifteen and became devoted to him for a lifetime. But Ching Ruashi had no offspring, so Zhou Wen had to comply with Zhou's mother's order to take a concubine, Jiang Ningzhu. First, she gave birth to a daughter named Zhou Yuning, who is the elder sister of Zhou Yuncheng. As he was not a male, Zhou's mother asked Zhou Wen to take a concubine again to spread the branches and leaves, but Zhou Wen refused to comply. Unexpectedly, Zhou's mother used means to send an outer room to Zhou Wen's bed. This gave rise to Zhou Yuncheng. Later, Zhou Wen's father passed away, and Zhou Wen gradually grew up. Cheng Ruashi and his business grew bigger and bigger, and Zhou's mother could no longer force Zhou Wen to restrain her. The matter of taking a concubine was abandoned, and she could only demand that Zhou Wen and Yu Lu share the benefits. After a few years, Jiang Mingzhu finally became pregnant again. Zhou's mother looked up every day, hoping to have a great grandson. However, the heavens did not fulfill Zhou's mother's wish, and Jiang Mingzhu gave birth again, still being a daughter. This is Zhou Yunqing's third sister, Zhou Yunzhu. Zhou's mother was extremely disappointed and wanted to continue persuading Zhou Wen. But the relationship between the Zhou family and his wife is stronger than that of Jin Jian, and Zhou's mother is gradually getting old, unable to make any more obstacles, so she has to accept it. Zhou Yuncheng, who could empathize with Cheng Ruashi, silently recited countless times in her heart. The feudal cancer should be removed, and inheriting the throne is not advisable. However, it seemed that Mr. Zhou really loved her, and Zhou Yuncheng thought to herself. Otherwise, in such an era, without a male heir, wouldn't it be equivalent to being a queen? Previously, she was grateful that she didn't have to worry about these dirty things. Now, she still has to face this big family. After all, people who go to Prince Jing's mansion every day have no reason to even have the strength to have a meal with their families. In the morning, Zhou Yuncheng went to inspect the construction site of Prince Jing's mansion as usual. Not to mention anything else, the Prince Jing mansion is willing to spend money on this matter, and they will punish all the first-party fathers that Zhou Yuncheng met in his past life. They hired several people according to Zhou Yuncheng's requirements and divided them into several construction teams to work simultaneously on different working faces. At noon, Zhou Yuncheng returned to the Zhou mansion on time and went to the dining area in the main hall. Air Mei is here. Zhou Yuncheng had just stepped into the restaurant when a girl with a delicate appearance and pink peach blossoms came up to greet her. Zhou Yuncheng looked at her and her eyes were like freshly washed grapes, big and round. A goose egg face paired with willow leaf eyebrows, a small mouth that seemed to smile rather than smile, unexpectedly added a touch of charm. This must be Sister Zhou Yuning. Hello, sister. Zhou Yunqing leaned down slightly and said goodbye. Come and sit down, Zhou Yuning said. Have you been feeling better lately? It's much better, thank you for your concern, sister, Zhou Yunqing said. I heard that Ermiai has been in the spotlight of Prince Jing's mansion lately, and no one can match her, Zhou Yuning said. I wonder how things are going over there now. Zhou Yunqing was about to answer when she heard Xing Er say behind her, Jiang Xiaoyang and Miss San have arrived. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw a woman dressed in gorgeous clothes walking in. In fact, it's a bit underestimated to say it's gorgeous. Zhou Yunqing thinks that in other words, elegance and grandeur are more appropriate. If she and Cheng Ruashi stood in front of her, Zhou Yunqing thought to herself. I would definitely think this is the Zhou family's wife. Zhou Yuning and Zhou Yuncheng stood up together and bowed slightly to her. Jiang Mingzhu nodded slightly and then went to sit down. Zhou Yuncheng only then realized that there was a girl behind her who was as thin as a stick, wearing a plain white background with dark stripes. Her whole face was thin and pale, and she couldn't distinguish whether it was fair skin or malnutrition. The eyebrows and eyes were quite beautiful, and there was also a clean and cold look in their eyes. 
This is probably the third sister Zhou Yunju. After Jiang Mingzhu sat down, the three sisters of the Zhou family took their seats one by one, and no one spoke. Even Zhou Yuning, who had just spoken with Zhou Yunchen, looked at her mother and sister and closed her mouth. The air was so quiet that it suffocated Zhou Yunchen. Zhou Yunchen thought to herself, it's like sitting at a table with our leaders at the annual meeting of a group of design professionals who have graduated from science and engineering in the same life. Fortunately, Zhou's mother appeared at this moment, and the old lady seemed to be in good spirits. However, at the age of only fifty or sixty, one could already see that she was somewhat unsteady. She was helped into the restaurant by the maid, and everyone stood up together to welcome her. She glanced at everyone, didn't speak, and walked straight to the main seat to sit down. Cheng Ruashi didn't come again. Zhou's mother asked as soon as she sat down. Returning to the old lady, the lady sent someone to say that the store has recently launched new dishes, which is really busy, said a grandmother behind Zhou's mother, bending down. Humph, Zhou's mother snorted coldly in her nose. I'm thinking, she's the busiest person in the world. She's so busy that she doesn't even have time to have a meal with her family. There's no other daughter. In law's rule of staying calm in the morning, and even the monthly gathering set by the master doesn't come. What a sin did I do to stand up with such a daughter. In law. Everyone sat down on their own while listening to Zhou's mother getting angry. Grandmother calmed down, Zhou Yuning responded, Mother may be too busy in the store. I heard Rong Rong say this morning that yesterday she wanted to bring some small dishes with her at her mother's place, but they were all gone. Song Rong Rong Zhou's mother asked, her mother received a decree, and the one whose aunt works as an empress in the palace. That's right, Zhou Yuning said. She said we went to Xinghua village yesterday, and there were so many people there. She had to wait in line for a long time before she could go in and eat. After finally eating it, she found the new side dishes very delicious and wanted to pack some for her aunt in the palace. As a result, the shop assistant kept saying they were all sold out. How do we make people queue up? Zhou's mother was a bit angry and said, Is Cheng Ruashi in the store? It seems to be there, Zhou Yuning said, glancing up at Zhou Mu with a slanted corner of her eye, all of which were noticed by Zhou Yunchen. So what did she think? Zhou's mother said, how could such a family line up with those ordinary people without official positions? Isn't this offending people? And how much do those small dishes cost? It's rare for people to like them. It's better to give them as gifts. Grandmother, I happened to be in the store yesterday and I have a clear understanding of the situation, Zhou Yunqing couldn't bear to listen any more and said, when Miss Song wanted to pack the side dishes and take them away, she had indeed bought them all. If we give her the unripe ones, whether it's the empress in the palace or the imperial lady of the Song mansion, if she eats them, she might really hold a grudge against us. Zhou's mother clearly didn't expect Zhou Yunqing to speak at this moment, looking at her with some confusion. You haven't been at odds with your mother all along, but today is a strange day. Did you help her talk? My granddaughter is just telling the truth, Zhou Yunqing felt a little guilty and lowered her head slightly, muttering to herself, I'm really stupid. I was born out of an outer chamber, and of course Cheng Ruashi doesn't like to see her. Yunqing has gone through this catastrophe and feels a lot more transparent, Jiang Mingzhu said at this moment. It's not as chaotic as before. Uh huh. Zhou Yunqing smiled awkwardly. Don't talk too much about others, Zhou's mother scolded when she heard Jiang Mingzhu speak. What does it matter if she's not in big trouble? A young girl is lucky to be able to save her life. As for you, I tried my best to bring you into the door, but you couldn't hold on to Zhou Wen's heart. That's why Ching Ruashi has been doting on her for so many years, causing us in the Zhou family to have no male offspring. Upon hearing this, Jiang Mingzhu's eyes darkened and he lowered his head without speaking again. Zhou Yunqing thought to herself, wow, this old lady is killing everyone in all directions. Anyway, Zhou's mother saw Jiang Mingzhu being indecisive and found it uninteresting, 
but her anger was clearly not over yet. She continued, Chen Ruoshi shouldn't have let others queue up like this. I see she still has that bad temper and is not virtuous at all. A good wife can bring good luck to the family, and she can't give birth to a son. She's still causing trouble to one her like this. Mother. At this moment, a powerful male voice rang out, and a sturdy figure walked in. How could I hear you saying that Ruoshi is not? Zhou's mother didn't expect Zhou Wenhui to come in at this moment. She was stunned for a moment, but her mouth said. She didn't come again. Back then, I was afraid that her solitary personality would ruin the family, so I decided to have dinner together. I had planned to have it every seven days, and you would spoil her and grow her life to once a month. That's all, she always uses excuses not to come. Now, don't even let me say it. Mother, Zhou Wen had already walked in and sat down. He didn't get restless or angry, but calmly said, Mother asked everyone to eat together. We all know what our original intention was. Zhou Wen said this and glanced at Jiang Mingzhu. Jiang Mingzhu looked at Zhou Wen's eyes and lowered his head somewhat mournfully. And from the beginning, I said that if she didn't want to come, he wouldn't come, and you also agreed, Zhou Wen continued. In fact, Zhou's mother not only agreed, but at the beginning she simply hoped that Qing Ruashi would not appear. As Zhou Wen said, Zhou's mother's initial intention was not to say that everyone would eat together, but to see that Zhou Wen always didn't go to Jiang Mingzhu's place in order to create opportunities for her. But after so long, Zhou's mother also discovered. Even if they were to meet in this way, Zhou Wen would not have any thoughts on anyone other than Qing Ruashi. That's why this account was all recorded on Qing Ruashi's head. You just spoil her like this. Zhou's mother felt her hard fist hit the cotton, her tone softened, and she said wearily, look at her. She even had young ladies from other families queue up with those ordinary people with flat heads. This is actually my son's idea, Zhou Wen said. It would be very troublesome to divide ranks based on absolute status. Moreover, it is also easy to offend people. For example, for those with different official positions but similar grades, who comes first and who comes second? Is it difficult for me to open a restaurant and ask officials from the Ministry of Rights to guard it for me? Moreover, there are many non-official officials. Zhou Yunqing nodded unconsciously after listening and said, Indeed, if privileges are given, it is even easier to offend people. It's better not to give them. Everyone follows the rules and is not criticized by others. Anyway, you're just looking at her, Zhou's mother sighed. It's just that, I can't say anything about you. Let's eat. In fact, at the end of the day, Zhou Wen smiled and said, somewhat immersed in his own world, it's still because if she is too capable and our restaurant business is too good, that's why we have such troubles. I may not have experienced them anywhere else, right? Zhou's mother's face turned pale from choking, and Zhou Yunqing was worried that she would have indigestion from this meal today. Zhou Yuning and Jiang Ningzhu silently picked up chopsticks and prepared to eat. Zhou Yunzhu didn't say a word from beginning to end, as if everything had nothing to do with her. Zhou Yunqing gave Zhou Wen a thumbs up in her heart. Strength protects wife, good behavior. I have completely forgotten the embarrassing appearance that Zhou Wen fainted when he first saw her pretending to be a corpse. And the woman at the center of the topic, Ching Ruashi, was busy in the kitchen of the restaurant, too lazy to even sneeze. Wife Protection Mad Demon Number 1 has been launched, end of this chapter.